Thank you. Good evening and welcome to our councillors, officers and members of the public in attendance and our viewers live streaming on tonight's council meeting. I declare this meeting open at 6.02pm. My name is Councillor Julie Williams and I'm the Mayor of Darabin City Council and I'm also the chairperson for tonight's council meeting. This meeting is to be scheduled hybrid meeting and I also would like to welcome councillors and members of the public who are attending online this evening. The meeting is being live streamed and a recording will be made available on the council website as soon as practical once the meeting is available. I would like to start by acknowledging the Wurundjeri, the Wurrung people and pay my respects to the, tradi the traditional owners on the land in which we stand and, and um, place this meeting this evening and recognise their continuing connection to the land, water and culture. I'd like to commence also by introducing our councillors that are here this evening. I have Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor... <laughs> Sorry, I need to have a drink. Councillor Newton, who's our Deputy Mayor, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, and I have Councillor Greco online I also like to recognise. We've just got an audio issue. Just, just one moment. Oh, okay, we have an audio issue. Do I need to go back? Okay. Councillor Greco, can you hear us online? Thumbs up if you can hear us. Councillor Greco, can you hear us? Councillor Greco, can you hear us online? Councillor Greco, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Apologies, we did have some technical issues then. I also would like to welcome our officers who are here this, this evening in attendance. I have Peter, our CEO, and Jody Watson, Sam Hewlett, which I'd like to recognise that tonight it's his last final official council meeting. I'd like to wish him all the best for his future endeavours. I have Kylie Bennett, Rachel Olivia and Jacinta Stevens, and thank you all, and let's go. I do not have any apologies, and um, I'd just like to ask councillors, do we have any disclosures of conflicts of interest that councillors would like to declare? I'll go to Councillor Messina, Councillor Hannan, and then Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to disclose that I have a conflict of interest in relation to anything related to the aged care um, in, in terms of the council plan and the budget. So I'll be declaring when we speak to those items. Thank you. Councillor Hannan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm declaring for, for an item which is, uh, I think, not yet added to the agenda, though I expect it will be under urgent business. Um, uh, another councillor has moved a motion which refers to uh, Energy Safe Victoria, um, which is part of the, uh, the organisation at, at DECA where I work, so I'll be uh, declaring... Um, an interest in that one and leave the room. Thank you. That's Thank you. Uh, agenda item 12. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Williams, I've got an item uh, of general interest, uh, conflict of interest to declare in relation to a relative, direct relative who lives close proximity to Northcote Golf Course and enjoys a residential amenity there and be leaving the chamber when that's dealt with in within item 9.1. Thank you. Councillor Rennie. Um, thank you, Mayor. I have uh, a conflict in relation to a capital works expenditure item on Jaka Jaka Community Centre, which is my place of work. Excellent. Thank you. If there are no further conflicts between officers or councillors, I'll move on to the next agenda item. 
Can we kindly please have confirmation of minutes from the previous meeting, which was held on the 24th of April 2023, and I need to have a mover for the minutes for the ordinary council meeting and a seconder. I have a mover, Councillor Lawrence. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Rennie. I'll put that to vote. All those in favour? That has been carried unanimously. Thank you. Councillor's occupational health and safety responsibilities. Council has an occupational health and safety responsibility to ensure that everyone attending tonight's meeting in person or online feels safe both physically and emotionally. I will go over to an acknowledgement regarding Father Bob McGuire. Darabin Council was very saddened to hear the recent passing of Father Robert Bob McGuire, AMRFD at age 88. And we express our sincere condolences to his family and friends. Father Bob was born in Thornbury and became a parish priest in the 1970s at St Peter and Paul's Church in South Melbourne, where he remained there for nearly 40 years. He was not only a loved family member, but was a social justice campaigner and people's priest who fought bravely for the underprivileged and homeless. In 2020, sorry, in 2003, he established the Father Bob McGuire Foundation so that no one was left behind, providing outreach programs, street-based community meals, education programs, community pantry, advocacy services and social inclusion programs. The foundation was styled on McGuire's revolutionary approach to social justice and its works became known as Bob Squab. One of the many testimonies of his work are recalled by community member Annette. It is wonderful experience being involved with Father Bob's foundation and the food van. I can say the benefits of being involved have also made a positive difference to my life. I was looking forward to each week, the wonderful mix of volunteers, the people that we served, the familiar faces the involvement around simple things such as making coffees for people or serving food and the positive conversations that followed. His tireless work in social justice earned a Father Bob a member of the Order of Australia in 1989 and was named Victorian of the Year in 2011. Council acknowledges the impacts of Father Bob had on this society a man who was committed himself to a life of faith and stood up for those most vulnerable. May he rest in peace. I personally met Father Bob um, many years ago where he married a, a very, very close friend of mine who's also now deceased. So um, I'd just like to say a big condolences and I know that there were many beautiful people on the other side. On another note, um, we had Ida Hobbit Day, which was held several events throughout Darabin. I'd like to say a big thank you to all our officers and those who attended in making Ida Hobbit such a huge success for this year, so thank you. Public question time. Councillors, will move on to public question time, which I'll allow 30 minutes for question time. And if we ex exceed that time, I will ask for a procedural motion to extend question time for another 30 minutes. In line with council governance rules, no questions will be taken from people in the gallery that have not already submitted by 12 p.m. today. You can only ask three questions and you cannot speak for more than two minutes. So kindly please be mindful that this is question time. Questions relating to notice of motions, petitions or urgent businesses is not usually accepted in accordance to our governance rules. For members of the public who have registered to ask a question in person, I will call your name when it's time. If your name is called, kindly please come if you're in the gallery, you can come up and speak at the lectern. If you're not in the gallery, I'll have one of our officers who can actually ask your questions on your behalf. For members of the public who, have, um, who are here this evening, as I said, that I will go over to our next... Um, oh, sorry, if there's like-for-like like questions, we'll group them together. And the first person who submitted those questions, those questions will be asked uh, in their name. I have Zoe Zemet is the first person I have this evening. I believe 
Zoe may not be here this evening, is that correct? If not, then I'll hand it over to our officers to ask their question. Thank you. Thank you, and through you, Mayor. Uh, Zoe's question relates to Darabin Library's historical newspaper. Late last year, Darabin Libraries removed all of the back issues. When asked about this, they stated everything would be republished in early 2023. The response now indicates these issues will not be republished. Could Council please inform the community as to why there was no warning or consultation about this and why this important historical resource is no longer available? Kylie, are you uh, able to answer that? Thank you. Thank you for your question, Zoe, and through you, Mayor. Darabin Libraries recognises the importance of local newspapers for our community. The Darabin Heritage website, which hosted these newspapers, migrated to a new system in May 2022. Unfortunately, this was not as seamless as we had expected and the newspapers were not able to be automatically transferred and we apologise for that. Our team are working to restore access to a range of content, including the leader newspapers, as quickly as they're able. In the meantime, library team members uh, have been assisting community members with their searches, and I'd encourage any members of the community to uh, request this support via the Ask a Library function uh, on our website, via email, telephone, or in person while in branch. Thank you. I'll go over to our next question, which I believe is Catelyn Sullivan. Is Catelyn in the gallery? No. If not, then I'll hand that over to our officers. Thank you. Thank you. And through you, Mayor, Catelyn has three questions this evening. The first one, could Council please provide an update on the release of a public statement of support for the inclusion of trans and gender diverse people in all sports in the municipality in line with the resolution of the December 2022 Council meeting? The second question is, what is Council's position on extending anti-vilification provisions to cover more attributes as recommended by the Victorian Parliamentary Inquiry into anti-vilification protections? And the third question is, how many charge sheets has Council officers filed charging an offence against provisions of the Summary Offences Act in accordance with Section 56.1 of the Act? So I believe that... Question. The first two questions would be answered by Kylie and then uh, Rachel is a, will answer the third question. Thank you. Thank you for the questions, Caitlin, and through you, Mayor. Officers will take questions one on two on notice and provide a response as soon as possible. And I'll hand to my colleague, Rachel, for the last question. Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Uh, I can confirm that uh, officers haven't filed any um, charge sheets relating to offences under the Summary Offences Act. Thank you. I'll head over to our next question, which is to Stacey. Is Stacey in our gallery this evening? If not, I'll also hand that over to our governance person. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Stacey has submitted three questions this evening. The first is, Will Council fly the trans flag to mark Trans Day of Remembrance on 20th November this year? The second question is, could Council please provide an update on the process of updating its Sexuality, Sex and Gender Diversity Action Plan, which was originally to be presented for endorsement at the December 2022 Council meeting? And the third question, could Council please provide an update on Strategic Objective 1.3.1 of the Council Plan for Rainbow Tick accreditation to be achieved by 2023? I'll get Kylie Bennett to answer that question. Thank you. Thank you for your questions, uh, Stacey. And through you, Mayor, Council has flown the trans flag to mark Trans Day of Remembrance uh, in previous years. Council is currently considering its community flag schedule and will consider this 
request as part of finalising that schedule. Council has commenced undertaking rainbow tick accreditation for four key services and learnings from the accreditation will be incorporated into the draft sexuality, sex and gender diverse action plan, uh, which is outlined to be developed now in 23-24. Thank you. The next item that we have is from Ruth Jelly. Is Ruth available? No, if not, I'll also give that to our governance person. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ruth has three questions this evening. The first question, why has Council announced on Facebook in the past week that St Raphael's Primary School in Preston is receiving funding under the Octopus School Program? Question two, how many projects have been budgeted under your street, you'll say, to address travel safety and travel behaviour change around schools? And the third question, is the number of school-focused travel safety projects budgeted under your street, you'll say, keeping pace with what would have been funded or octopus schools had the program not been discontinued? Thank you. Over to you, Rachel. I believe you can answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you for your questions, Ruth. Um, we're supporting St Raphael Primary uh, through a state government grant, and we've described that work with the school as opt octopus schools because it's a term the community understands. A lot of the activities are very similar. Um, I can advise that nine of the top 20 adopted priorities in the Your Street, Your Say program. So we've completed the first area for that program. Nine of the top 20 adopted priorities will improve access to schools. And certainly safety around schools is a key element of the investigations we're doing currently in the second area. Um, and then in regards to your last question, uh, yes. So 50% of the draft capital works program for transport safety improvements in the draft budget that council will consider tonight are near schools. Thank you. Uh, Caitlin Jones, I believe that uh, you possibly in attendance. Would you like to come up to the lectern and ask your questions? Thank you. You just need to state your name and what suburb. Um, Caitlin Jones from Northgate, and thank you, Mayor. Um, my questions, do you want me to read my questions? Please, <clears throat> if you'd like to. Yeah, sure. Um, could we ask, and it's behalf on my street, um, but on behalf of my street, Gladstone Avenue, Northcote, could we ask for council support in delaying the removal of trees at number 43 and 45 Gladstone Avenue? Um, my second question is, could we ask for council support in exploring <clears throat> identified options for an exemption for the trees from Energy Safe Victoria? And could we ask for council support in exploring affordable alternatives to removal, such as brackets for repositioning of power lines? Thank you. I believe Sam is able to answer those questions. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Mayor, and through you. Thanks, Caitlin, for your questions. Yeah, I can confirm that we've put a, a hold on the, the immediate removal of the trees until councils have received and considered some additional advice from officers, um, and that matter will be dealt with later on tonight. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have Paul in attendance this evening? No? I'll, um, I'll hand that over to our governance persons to ask uh, quick Paul's question on his behalf. Thank you. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, Paul's question is, will Council please provide a detailed budget and program of works for remediating AS14281 non-compliant and dangerous footpath crossovers at street intersections? Over to you, Sam, if you're able to answer that question. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks, Paul, for your uh, question. Uh, yes, we agree, Paul, that there are some uh, several uh, crossings uh, that have been identified in need of rectification. Um, we typically fund those through Council's footpath renewal program. Um, Council prioritised some other uh, works in the current financial year and will consider its investment in footpaths and crossings 
as part of its budget, which will be considered tonight. So you may wish to stay along. Thanks. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I have Serena O'Mealy. Is she in the off? No, I didn't see her this evening. Oh, oh Serena, sorry. Oh, my apologies. Okay, are you able to ask your questions? Yes, thanks. Thank you, Serena. Uh, please provide attendance list for all councillors as applicable or advisory committee meetings since the commencement of this term of Darwin Council. If the information will take some time to gather, I would appreciate it if attendance and Darwin Nature Trust and Darwin Aboriginal Advisory Committee could be prioritised. And the second question is, can you please provide an update regarding the purchase of three parcels of Big Roads land? within Clements Reserve. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. Uh, I believe that Jody Watson's able to answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Serena. Um, with regard to advisory committees, I can confirm that this information is reported publicly each month through an appendix to the governance report. Um, the appendix includes councillor attendance records for all meetings, including councillors, which also includes our advisory committee meetings. I'm happy to speak to you offline if you'd like some assistance in collating that information, um, but it is publicly available already. With regard to your second question and the acquisition of the three parcels of land at Clements Reserve, I can confirm that we're still working through negotiations with the Department of Transport, otherwise known as Vic Roads, um, and we're seeking just to finalise those negotiations with regard to the contract of sale in the coming weeks. Um, thank you for your continued interest. Thank you. Thank you, Jodie, too. Uh, do we have Sean in the gallery this evening? If not... I'll ask uh, our governance to ask your question on that behalf. Thank you, and through you, Mayor. Sean has three questions this evening. The first one being, why has the footpath outside 78 Station Street, Fairfield, which has a huge hole in it and that has grown in size after first being reported and now can fit a child's foot down it, not been fixed after reporting on the 23rd of January? and was followed up with an email stating a senior manager would contact me two months ago has not occurred. That the second question is, the cone that Darabin Council has used to cover the large hole in the footpath outside 78 Station Street, Fairfield, has moved multiple times and needed to be put back in place by residents over the last three months. Can Darabin Council release the risk assessment showing that only a cone is needed to cover this hole for ongoing safety of children? The third question is, when and why, sorry, when, why and how did Darabin Council make and communicate the decision to no longer process requests for larger bins for residents with additional needs such as multiple nappy using children, large multi-generational families or medical needs for increased waste? Thank you. I believe Sam is able to answer those questions. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Mayor, and through you. Thanks, Sean, uh, for your questions. I would like to apologise, Sean, for the delay in contacting you and responding to your request. The hole is in a service pit lid and officers have prioritised its repair, which we hope will be done in the next couple of days. Um, just in relation to your second question about uh, mitigating the risk, we considered how best to mitigate uh, this risk at the time and what we hoped would be a short-term uh, intervention and we decided a bollard would suffice at that time. Um, sorry, it's been delayed further. And in relation to your uh, third question, Council's currently reviewing arrangements for its waste charges in 23-24, which will be considered um, along with the budget by Council tonight. And baseline data was being worked through. Officers considered it necessary to temporarily hold additional services while this base data was being prepared and considered. Uh, in addition, there's a sector-wide shortage of waste bins, so we've had to prioritise uh, residents with medical waste requirements who are still able to apply. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Sam. I will go over to our next person, which is Matt. Is Matt in attendance this evening? Matthew Heafield? Yep. You're more than welcome to come up to the lectern. If you can kindly just name your name. State your name and also state your suburb that you're from. Sure. 
Hopefully everyone can hear me. Hello, good evening. My name's Matthew Hayfield. I'm, uh, I live in Elphington, but part of the Northgate Cricket Club. Uh, question, question one, Chairperson, the State Government paid $500,000 to Darabin City Council in 2017 to build and maintain female-friendly sporting facilities at Bill Laurie Oval in Northgate. To date, and six years later, after multiple press releases, these facilities have not commenced. Northgate Cricket Club is the only cricket club in your electorate that provides a pathway to state and test cricket, yet these facilities are embarrassing. If Darabin City Council truly believes in levelling the playing field, change the game and the Darabin Women's Sports Club, all of which are programs of this council designed to encourage female participation, why has the current Bill Laurie Oval project not commenced? Question two. The project was originally signed off, funded and approved in 2017 then shelved. In 2017, State Government provided the $500,000 to fund the, some of the project, shelved again. When we factor in the power line underground work, the design competition, the engineering reports, the falling down bluestone wall, and six years of Darabin Council staff labour, Chairperson, can I ask what, how, how much is this budget alone, sorry, can I ask how much has this project alone cost the, tax the rate payers of Darabin? And question three. The Darabin City Council website states that the Bill Laurie Oval redevelopment will be postponed and considered as part of the 23-24 budget. Are you able to advise how, the proje how a project that council has supported since 2017 and has received 500,000 in state government and a commitment of $200,000 from Cricket Victoria and AFL Victoria was not included in the interim 23-24 budget. Thank you. Thank you. I believe uh, Sam is able to answer those questions. Uh, through you, Mayor, I'm, no, I might Kylie. ask uh, those. Uh, sorry, answer those. Uh, Matt, thank you for your questions. Uh, and through you, Mayor. Uh, the draft 23-24 council budget that council are considering tonight also incorporates a four-year capital works program. This draft capital works pro program proposes that the Bill Laurie Oval Pavilion Redevelopment Project would recommence in 2026-27. Uh, following council endorsement of the draft budget, there will be an opportunity for community to provide input and feedback ahead of council making a final decision in June on the budget, but also the four-year capital works program. Uh, once council has resolved uh, its position, it will then write to the state government in relation to uh, the funding that it has received in relation to that project. Uh, with respect to question two, uh, we'd like to take this question on notice to allow us uh, time to provide you uh, a, a full and uh, proper answer in terms of the costs involved. Thank you, Kylie. I appreciate your time there. Um, our next question I have is from Miriam. Is Miriam in the gallery this evening? Miriam Atwater? No, if not, I'll go over to our governance person. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Marianne has submitted three questions. The first one is, with regard to the draft budget fees and schedules in Report 9.1, there is no indication of the likely cost of the new types of parking permits that are in the draft parking permit policy currently being consulted on. Can the proposed cost of each new parking permit please be made available to the public? The second question. Did the Municipal Monitor attend meetings of the Audit and Risk Committee during his term as Municipal Monitor? Question three. With regard to the Municipal Monitor's finding that the Council needs to give priority to securing the ongoing financial sustainability of the City, invest in information technology and to suitable staff accommodation, has the Council Audit and Risk Committee made similar recommendation in recent biennial reports? And if so, in which reports? Thank you. Thank you, Jacinta. Over to Rachel, who might be able to answer those questions. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I can answer the first one and then I'll pass to Jodie if that's all right. Um, thank you, Marion, for the question. So, uh, so you asked about the uh, parking permit policy 
And so council has proposed to change its policy, but community consultation is still underway on a draft. Um, and so council will uh, make sure it understands community views first before making its final decision on that policy. And for that reason, the draft budget uh, that's in the papers tonight has been prepared based on the current policy and the current types of permits in place. Uh, we are expecting council to consider a decision about its new policy um, and any uh, next steps associated with that in roughly July this year. Thank you, and I believe Jody is able to answer the, the remaining two. Thank you for the questions, Marion. I'm pleased to confirm that the monitor did attend audit and risk committee meetings during his time with council. His attendance was recorded in our attendance records reported through the governance cyclical report monthly. In terms of the Audit and Risk Committee, it's had six meetings over the past six months, and the next biannual report to Council is due to be reported in June to the June Council meeting. The Committee has made a number of recommendations to Council, several of which are referenced in tonight's Council report for the budget and draft financial plan, in addition to others which have informed the development of this work alongside the Revenue and Rating Plan and Tenure Financial Plan that are being considered by Council tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Uh, is Louise in the gallery this evening? Louise Kenny Shen. If not, attending, I'll hand that over to our governance person to answer or ask her question on her behalf. Thank you, Mayor. Louise has one question this evening. Can Council please provide information as to what the delay is in construction of new cricket nets for Preston Cricket Club? Thank you. Kylie Bennett. Thank you, Mayor, and, th uh, and thank you, Louise, for the questions. Um, Council has received some community feedback and concerns about the construction of the Preston City Oval cricket nets. Officers have sought to understand those concerns while balancing the needs of the cricket club and the Preston City Oval's joint purpose as a sports field and public open space. Uh, officers are working with Council at the moment to brief councillors uh, further on that and will be looking uh, to call a special meeting as uh, soon as possible for Council to consider the matter, uh, but also for interested uh, community members and stakeholders to uh, speak to councillors um, ahead of Council making a, a decision on that project. Thank you, Kylie. Our next question I have from John Nugent. Is John in the gallery this evening? John, if you can kindly come up to the lectern and if you can just state your name and your suburb. John Nugent Epping. I have three questions, Mayor. Uh, first question is, Mayor Williams, could you please advise when will your officers send out the answers from questions I have asked in previous council meeting, one, asking questions from the floor, two, the number of female, uh, number of female and male in council buildings, and when will council send out the acquittal for for the lights? That's question one. Question two, Mayor Williams, could you please advise why adults are charged more than children when using a council swimming pool? And question three, Mayor Williams, could you please advise what was the cost spent on each of the grounds from the state government's grant? That's for the lighting. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that Jody Watson and Kylie Bennett are able to answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you for your questions, John. I'm sincerely sorry if you haven't received response to those questions. Certainly I did believe that the first two questions had been responded to, so one of my staff will contact you this week to discuss that, um, and an officer from, from the relative department will come back to you with regard to the other one, and I do apologise. And uh, John, uh, in terms of your second question around uh, charges for uh, swimming pool access, uh, it's common practice across a range of services, including council swimming pools, for adults to be charged more than children. The reduced fees are an incentive to support family usage and participation in these activities by young people. 
Uh, with respect to your third question around sports field lighting acquittals, uh, the or the the uh, cost, uh, the sports field lighting acquittals are still being finalised uh, following their launches, which occurred uh, earlier this month. Council expects to submit these in the next three months, and we'll be in a position to provide the costs once those documents have been submitted to and accepted by the state government. Thank you, Kylie. I believe that concludes tonight's question time. Uh, submissions. We have one request to make a virtual submission this evening, which is from Serena, I believe. Is Serena, are you there? Online? Yes, yep, okay. In relation to 9.6, which is the state government inclusionary on the housing pilot for 16 to 20 Dumburton Street Reservoir. So, Serena. Uh, yes, sure. Okay. Um, if you have a request to make your submission in person, oh, so that goes on to somebody else. That's all right. So, yes, you can kindly um, make your submission. Thank you. So the chronology that came with the officer's report missed out some key turning points in relation to the Dumbarton grasslands. And these need to be understood so that future decision making is improved. Darabin Council was first offered its uh, first right of refusal for the grasslands by the Victorian State Government around 2015. Council's internal valuation of the site was $3.62 million. The land was found to be of national natural heritage significance in 2011, some seven years before the Biosis Ecology Report. This finding was incorporated into the draft Darabin Natural Heritage Strategy 2015 to 2025, and this strategy was considered at the same council meeting on 5th of October 2015 as the state government's disposal of the Dumbarton Street grasslands, yet somehow the two items remained unconnected. In addition, Council decision logic map assessment tool took no account of the environmental significance of the site. Ward councillors moved a motion to inform the state government that the land was of no strategic interest to Darabin Council and sought to have the land transferred to council for free. Time and again, councillors learned the hard way that seeking to have land gifted from the state, town, state government is a failing strategy. Due to broad scale land clearing and development, there is less than 1% of Victorian volcanic plains grassland left and even relatively small areas of such land are precious and irreplaceable. The only reason this site doesn't have automatic protection under the EPBC Act is because it falls slightly short of the minimum land size. Members of the public have also never been informed why Council ceased its efforts to swap this land for a less environmentally significant site. So this is just by way of saying decision making can be improved. Thank you, Serena. I appreciate your time. Um, we have also have a request for a submission in person from David Smith in relation to a petition. So do we have any petitions this evening? Yes, I do, Mayor. Thank you. I have a petition um, that has been submitted by David Smith who'd like to make a two-minute presentation um, in relation to the removal of the cricket nets at Preston City Oval. At this stage, I'd like to thank all 175 hanged signatories and 62 online signatories. I'd also like to thank Richard Norris from the Preston Cricket Club and I look forward to the further evolution of what takes place at that little plot. Thank you, David. CEO for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Messina. <clears throat> Sorry, um, just to further to uh, Councillor Messina's comments, uh, I'd just like to read out what the petition said in, in full. Uh, to the undersigned of the 175 hand signatures and the additional online si uh, 62 online signatures. To the Darabin City Council, this petition of residents this petition of residents of Darabin opposes the dem demolition of mature trees and removal of publicly accessible open green space for the purpose of an enclosed cricket net on the corner of Bruce and Mary Street in Preston. 
The proposed location of the cricket nets will create a hostile street edge, not in keeping with the expectations of the community, and will damage the character of the area. The petitioners therefore request the Darabin City Council will immediately stop their tender process and plans for works at the corner of Bruce Street and Mary Street, and we request that the Council revise their documentation and engage with the community for a more appropriate resolution of the location of the Preston uh, City Oval cricket nets. Uh, just to add on top of what the undersigned, or what the signed uh, petitioners agreed to, I'd um, just like to say that the, the park on the corner of Bruce and Mary Street was not only a, a habitable space for all our wildlife and insects and somewhere to encourage uh, local native fauna and flora, but it's also a place for people to stop and have lunch. People that work on High Street and on Bell Street, it's a place also for people to take their small children uh, to a more appropriate playground, which is suitable for, for younger children who wouldn't be able to access the new playground that's been provided as part of the, the overhead rail project. Um, it's also a place where people of the community, when they're going to visit a football match, will stop and play with their children. And it's something which I've observed quite recently, um, standing at the corner to get petition signatures, is that uh, visiting teams will utilise the park before a game and it does get uh, quite a lot of activity, even though there is an alternative park not too far away. Um, and it's also a place um, with multiple mature trees on the, uh, on the corner of the site, which help to alleviate the urban heat island effect and uh, to cut down mature trees uh, and such a significant quantity of Thank mature you, trees... Thank you. Your time's up. Um, ..I think would be uh, detrimental. Thank you very much. Councillors, we have a large agenda this evening, so if time permits that we'll try and get through as, as many items as we can this evening. If, um, if we go over time, I will be asking to exercise my rights to put items to be put to vote and um, also that we can have permitting extra time if need to be on extending that. Uh, we'll go over to the first consideration reports for 9.1 for the endorsement of the draft budget. Do I have a mover on that item? Excuse me, Mayor. Are we oh, going oh, to split up because I have it to conflict? So I may ask that we That's hear. That's right. It. Okay. We're going to go over to. So we'll have to. Yeah, I'll get Jody to explain it. So we're going to have to divide it up a little bit on this part for the conflicts of interest. Through you, Mayor Williams, just to explain that there is an alternative, of an adjusted officer recommendation to reflect several minor changes, but also to incorporate an adjustment to the recommendation to enable those with conflicts to remove themselves for particular elements before then participating in endorsement of the full elements. Um, and the same would be true for the upcoming council plan report. So, councillors, you'll see on the second screen at point nine, point ten, point eleven, they are reflected to incorporate Councillor Messina, Councillor Lawrence's, and Councillor Rennie's conflicts declared at the start of the meeting. Um. Certainly, Mayor, my suggestion would be that um, having just looked back at the first slide, please, Georgie. Um, that the first element is actually on the financial plan, that you take these one by one, so collectively the financial plan first as a decision. The next resolution, is, next recommendation is on the next page, that council at point eight, and consider that separately. That would give you the opportunity to, to do that particular section line by line, removing the councils who have conflicts before they then return to all consider endorsement of the draft budget, and the rest would proceed in groups for you for the different elements. Yep. Whole, whole yep. Yep. So we'll do part one first. So it should part one, page one, which is the for that of council. So that will move point one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven at this point in time. So before we go to the mover and seconder, I'm going to ask if councillors have any questions on this item to our officers. Sorry, Mayor, 
Mayor, if we can just get clarification, the mover and seconder are going to be for the whole motion or just the items that you've listed? No, we're only just going to do one to seven at the moment and then I'll ask for a mover because I apologise. I, I, the mover and seconder previously, they may not have known what was moving. I didn't know because of the, how it was going to be split, if that makes sense. Now I've got clarification that those who have a conflict on page two, we will go through that one line item at a time. Page one, we'll do that as a whole. And page two, because at each... We'll have to split it for those who have a conflict, for those who do have a conflict can leave the room and then we can have that discussion line by line. Th thanks, Mayor. If I can just clarify then, so we will be debating those items individually when councillors leave the room? Correct. correct, yes. Yep. yes. Because I think we need to be able to debate those items yep. as well. Thanks. Yeah, oh, definitely. So we'll just do page one, part one, but if councillors have any questions in reference to items from one to seven... You can um, ask those questions if you feel the need. Mayor Williams, um, if I may, um, on my screen, uh, I can't see um, those items clearly. Could that somehow be enlarged so I know that, so that I know what we actually are uh, discussing and debating? Is the screen with the writing on it? We can't um, enlarge it, but maybe one of the councillors is able maybe to phone, shoot it and send it to, to Councillor Greco. I'm happy to do that. Uh, okay, I'll Councillor Greco, have you received that now? Yes, I have. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Councillor Zahn, do you have any questions to our officers in reference to those items up on the screen? Councillor Greco, you have your hand up, is that right or not? No? No, I didn't have my hand up. I had no questions. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, over to, if there were no questions, I'm going to ask councillors who would like to be the mover. I have Councillor Hannan as the mover and Councillor McCarthy as a seconder. Councillor Hannan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, I'm, I'm happy to move both the financial plan and, and the budget and other items, but I'll, I'll just uh, speak to now for the 10-year uh, financial plan and the items there, one to seven. Um, so the financial plan was established in 2021 at the beginning of the, of the current council term, and a full review was planned for 2026. Um, however, um, significant changes in the external environment have been have been forecast and the long-term conditions have changed. And this is not just for Darabin, this is for all councils in Victoria and beyond. Um, there's been significant changes in interest rates and inflation, including very high construction, sec construction sector and energy sector inflation and supply chain disruptions arising from COVID and the war in Ukraine. Um, so 
there has been a need to um, review these assumptions um, and uh, we thank members of the deliberative engagement um, processes who've, who've given their views uh, to this in terms of how we make decisions, big decisions for the future. I'm just looking for the time that's behind there. Okay. Um, some of the uh, notable changes are a tighter capital and operating budget envelope overall. Um, starting with efficiencies from the, the next financial year, which we'll talk about in the budget. Um, and this has meant the deferral of some construction work. Um, there's been a reduction in other operational expenditure um, and some of the some um, activities that have been planned have been deferred. Uh, at the same time, there's been um, investment planned in the long term in the tools and technologies needed to to achieve efficiencies longer term. So there's an allowance uh, in future years for in significant investment in the Enterprise Resource Program. Um, it's also worth noting that the financial statements um, and outcomes contained here respond to the monitor's recommendations and the Minister for Local Government's directions received last month. Um, and I, I would summarise by saying, set us up for uh, financial sustainability in the long term, while still delivering on um, our core services and some of the real important priorities. Um, it's fair to say in the financial long-term plan, as well as the budget, I don't agree with every line. Um, it's always a matter of prioritisation. I uh, fully uh, agreed with the comments made earlier about Bill Laurie Oval and thank the um, Northwood Cricket Club for their contribution. Um, I know that this, this is out for consultation and, and I commend it to councillors. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McCarthy has a seconder. Uh, Mayor, I'll reserve my right for the moment as a seconder. Thank you. Councillors, are there any other speakers? Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Williams, through you. Um, yes, we're now dealing with the main elements that frames this budget in terms of capital works um, plan. Um, I'd like to um, point out some things made in the public statements that Darabin is broke or was driven off a cliff is not the case. Um, the, the issue here, of course, is that our income remains fairly much on track in line with the last six interim income projections. There is a lot of constraints on there. Some of that I'll put down to us being a bit over-ambitious with two projects and over um, taken by surprise, I guess, by interest rates and borrowings. So uh, community will notice a greatly reduced uh, capital works program. That's not an austerity budget across the whole services or the council, but it is a major delay for the community in getting capital works. Uh, my original complaint about this council three years ago that that would cost us $20 million. This outlay shows it will cost far more than that, but in deferred capital works. So the community needs to understand this is a very serious budget. I've voted against many budgets in this place since 2017. I'll be voting for this one because it actually needs a drastic step to bring things into control so that we can get back to building capital works in this city. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the item? Councillor Messina. Thank you. I just want to thank the officers um, and the count, my fellow councillors who have spent many, many, many hours to deliberate what we want in this particular budget. It's been hard. But just like all households, all large businesses and all small businesses, we've had to face not only COVID and the pandemic, but also the economic climate and construction costs. Although there are some things that we'd like to have in there aren't there, um, we don't have a magic wand, but I think we've delivered something that is balanced and something that uh, we can to walk through, walk, uh, work towards further infrastructure um, moving forward. And I'd like to say that moving forward, um, what this council has um, <laughs> taken is um, lack of buildings that we're not 
looked or addressed at many council terms before and we've had to not only put them up to um, original condition and a condition that community will think is acceptable but also we've delivered major infrastructure programs. Not all will be on this but looking forward we hope that some more will be delivered in the future. Thank you Councillor Messina. Any other councillors? Thank you, Mayor Williams. Thank you, Councillor Nugent. I'd just like to add that this has definitely been quite a, dif a difficult and different budget process to ones that I've been through before. And it is some big changes, but we are in a resource-constrained environment and I think where this has landed is okay in the circumstances. And I'm really keen to hear from community over the next two weeks if there's anything that we've missed or anything we should be adding in, taking out, we really do want to hear for you, from you. So please do let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Councillor Greco, you have, uh, you'd like to speak on the item? Yes, I would. Um, okay, go ahead. Evidence. Yeah, look, first of all, I'd like to say that um, I want to thank the officers for uh, the process that we've been through. It's been a very exhaustive process. In the many years that I've been on council, I don't think I've ever gone through such a thorough budget process where um, we felt that the councils have been um, adequately informed of all the budget implications. And, um, and the discussion and the robust discussions that we had. I, I think we all learned through this process and, um, and that we all gained a lot out of under further understanding um, the budget requirements of council. The other thing I'd like to say also is that um, um, as part of this, uh, what we're endorsing now is um, a review of the, um, of the basically the council plan and some of the priorities in the council plan. And also what's important to note is that notwithstanding some of the difficult times we as a council are going through, together with many other councils across the uh, across Victoria, we've been able to, as part of the long-term financial plan, been able to set the path to establish a future fund in order to fund future um, big major works um, in, in, in the future. It's important that we do that because whilst we are going through a, a tough economic time, um, it's also important that we plan for the future and plan that we ensure that our infrastructure needs for the community uh, are properly addressed. So well, again, finish off with commending the officers. I thoroughly enjoyed this process um, and it's, uh, it's been a process where we've all learned a lot more about the budget and we've all felt a sense of ownership over what the, the, the budget is and what the long-term financial plan is. Thank you. Perfect timing, Councillor Greco. Thank you. Any other councillors would like to talk on the item? Councillor Dimitriadis. Um, I did ask for clarifications and questions before. Oh, sorry. Um, um, but I, I, I will honour it and ask yeah. uh, our CEO if he could kindly clarify that, please. Um, through you, Mayor, thank you for the question, Councillor Demetri Artis. In essence, when you vote through the next parts of the budget, because this is approving the long-term financial plan, if there are any of your decisions that impact the long-term financial plan, I will need to go out and make those amendments consistent with any of those decisions. So, for example, if you were to increase your capital works program in the next section of this debate, then I'd need to just go back and make those changes. So it just gives me the authority to make any amendments which are consistent with decisions which are about to come before you. Can I just note that it actually says to amend the uh, draft budget as well as the financial plan. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted clarity on that yeah. um, because there's been no amendments put up at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Dimitriadis. Just to clarify, that statement at point six covers any change that may be necessary from both this decision and the decision in the next element of the recommendation which relates to the budget. 
and the, you'll see the same in the council plan and council plan action plan report. So should there be any changes, it's only if anything emerges out of the decision for this report. And it would only be prior to proceeding to exhibition, so in the next 24 to 36 hours. So how does that uh, relate to amendments? So do we need to... So if I have an amendment, do I need to raise it now or can it be discussed internally for the budget? Through men, no. This is basically just giving me the editorial pen so that before we put the, all, of the, all of your documents out to consultation after tonight, I can make sure they're consistent with all the decisions you've made tonight. So I'm not going to be changing anything that is not consistent with any decisions that you make. At the moment, the PAC, if you vote on all the officer's recommendations, there's no need to make any changes. If you make some changes tonight, I'll just need to amend the bits and make sure that the long-term financial plan is consistent with your 23-24 budget decisions. And you'll also see that in the actual documents as well so that I can make editorial changes. Um, in that case, I have an amendment for the budget. Oh, is it? The next bit, the next oh, sorry. My apologies. Okay. Excuse me, the pen. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Sorry. Yes, foreshadowing. Thank you. Are there any other councillors would like to speak to this item, or in opposition? Councillor McCarthy, as you were the seconder for this item and you reserved your rights to speak, would you like to speak on this item? Yeah, can I just clarify? I'm not sure. I, um, we don't finish. We won't be voting on on the total item until we can have resolved all the matters over page. Is that correct? No, I think we're going to vote on this page. We're voting. We're voting, and we're looking at this, which is items one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not the whole lot just yet. We're, we're doing in parts. It's broken down. We're not doing the whole lot in one hit. It's broken down because of people's conflicts of interest. No, thanks, Mayor. No, I just wanted to be clear, though. So if once I've spoken, though, is that the conclusion of debate in relation to this motion? For this item, yes. So we will be having a second mover and seconder because I don't... For, the, for part two, yes. Thank you. We're, we're only looking at what's on screen. That... Only what's on screen. Everybody, for those who are online, including Councillor Greco, and those in the gallery, those who are councillors, we're only considering what you can see on the screen in front of you. Thanks, Mayor. If that's the case, then I will um, speak as the seconder and um, I'll wait till we debate the other items um, to speak to those matters. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to our officers for their work in getting us to this stage. Um, it is easy for us as councillors to come into this chamber and to talk about these items, and we have spent many hours together in workshops doing some detailed work. We haven't always agreed, um, but I think it's important that we've gotten to the stage where we have a budget that we can present this evening and exhibit for the community. But it's actually a group of people, that some of whom sit around in this room with us and also who are not here with us tonight um, across the organisation who have actually been doing the detailed work to try to balance the books and actually bring together a financial picture that meets not just our community and our organisational objectives, but I think also meets the pretty serious requirements that state, government and other bodies um, require of us in order to um, deliver a level of financial sustainability in a time when there are significant financial constraints. I would just also um, draw to Councillor's attention um, point three, which I think is important, which is um, obviously the report by the Municipal Monitor and the recommendation um, uh, that, that it was included in that report, which speaks to councils' obligations, along with all other councils, to understand its financial constraints, some of which are not within our control. They're actually the result of rate capping. They're the result of increased capital expenditure um, by state government, which has increased the cost of building and doing things here in Darabin. And uh, it's really important that we focus on maintaining the services that matter, Mayor, and also maintaining that investment in infrastructure for things that our community needs. So I'll end it there, but I just wanted to say a big thank you to our officers who often don't get recognised in this work and, uh, and I think um, are the ones who ultimately end up implementing this. And I really encourage the community, as I'm sure we will all be doing, um, to engage with this budget process and, and get, have a chance to have a look at what we've put forward. Thanks. Thank you. If there are no further speakers on this item, then I'll put this item to vote, which is this part one, page one. Councillors, all those in favour? 
that has been carried unanimously. Thank you. We'll go to part two. As I said, we will have to break it down by line item. Okay, so part two, we'll have to go to, because there's the first one that we probably have as a conflict of interest would be aged care reforms. So... I need a mover and a seconder for all the way for this item, part two, which is eight to 14. Anybody who has a conflict of interest cannot move or second this item. I had my cancel. I'll move with an amendment. Okay, Councillor Greco, and I had Councillor McCarthy. Yeah, but Councillor Greco also had his hand up. And then I saw Councillor McCarthy. So, Councillor Greco, do you have your amendment? It's been sent through, so hopefully it will come up on the screen for people to see. Councillor Greco, do you have your amendment? Councillor McCarthy is a seconder. Uh, Mayor, I won't second that, Mayor. Okay. Can, can, can that be sent to me also? Because, again, it's just so that I can check the, the wording. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, there's, it needs to be broken down because there's councillors that have a conflict in reference to these amendments, Gaetano. So we're going to have to split this amendment up. Okay. okay. Councillors, I'm going to actually ask for an adjournment. I believe that we need to go through this and need to navigate what's the best way forward. So I'm going to ask for a 10 minute break. I apologise. It is now going on to nearly 10 past seven and we'll try and resume back at 20 past seven. Thank you. Apologies for those who are online.
Okay, we need to ask our officers to please resume. And kindly please be mindful that we are in a safe working environment. <coughs> Councillor Greco, you can hear us? Yes, I can. Um, Thank you. I can also hear you guys too. Thank you. Councillors, after having discussion with the, the CEO and the governance, I've decided that to go through part two line by line and vote on it line by line and not as a whole. I think it's uh, more appropriate. So I'm going to go back to this item and that splits up maybe your um, amendments that you may have, Gaetano, I'm not sure. But let's go with the first one. So our amendment we have this evening for part two is number eight for cancel. In regard... Uh, ma'am, if I may, in the amendment that I had, uh, I just checked it, and there's one point that's missing. I think it was circulated by Councillor Vigiliano, and if that could be included... Uh, okay, we, when we get to that, but we're looking at what's on the screen. I don't know if you have the screen, which is part two. Number eight, yes. note that yeah, the community yeah. su submissions for draft 2023-24 budget are invited through community consultation from the 6th to the 26th of February 2023 with all submissions Appendix C having been considered for the budget and separately at the hearing of submissions committee meeting held on the 14th of March 2023. So yeah. I'm going to ask for a mover and a seconder for that item. I had I saw Councillor Rennie's hand up first and then I saw Councillor Messina's hand up second. Um, Councillor Rennie. Um, thank you, Mayor. Look, I think this is self-explanatory. It just describes the process where community uh, consultation took place and I'm, uh, I'm sure it will be unanimously supported. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Messina, do you have... Yes, just further. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. I just want to thank all the submissions and those admitted through and went through the process. Thank you. Are there any objections on this item? If not, then I'm going to ask for the item to be put to vote. All those in favour? That has been carried unanimously. I have uh, item number nine, which in reference to a councillor having a conflict of interest. Councillor Messina... Thank you. I have a, a conflict on this item, Mayor. Um, just like to declare that I am a home care service provider and I will be um, declaring that in writing and removing myself from the um, chamber. Thank you very much, Councillor Messina. Once Councillor Messina removes herself from the chamber, then we can go into the debate. Or if councillors have any questions on this item to our officers. First, Councillor Lawrence. No, just seeking to move the item. You wanted to move the item, and I have Councillor Rennie to second the item. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, uh, um, Mayor Williams. This um, item uh, is a very important initiative, um, first outlined in um, our various policies um, under previous Mayor, uh, Councillor Rennie, um, and is an important item that we continue to, you know, occupy the space of quality provider of age services in the, whatever new environment that's going to be uh, put upon us from the Commonwealth. Um, and I also you know, thank Councillor Greco for championing this issue uh, as we've been going through. But it's a very important feature um, in this budget that even in this um, constrained uh, environment, we're looking out for our most vulnerable residents. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Renning? Uh, nothing to add, thank you. If there are no further speakers on this item, then I'll put this item to vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. I'll wait for Councillor Messina to come back into the room before we move on to the next item. Um, thank you, Mayor. If I could, can I declare my conflict on the next item? Certainly. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Yes. I'm, I'm declaring conflict on this item as it relates to capital works at Jaka Jaka Community Centre where I am employed. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll just wait for Councillor Rennie to 
evacuate from the chamber and then we'll enter the debate. If councillors have any questions, they're welcome to ask a question to our officers before we ask for a mover and seconder. Are there any questions on this item? If not, can I ask kindly for a mover? I have Councillor Lawrence as a mover and Councillor McCarthy as a seconder. Thank you. Over to you, Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, uh, Mayor Williams, ha happy to uh, endorse this item for the budget. Of course, our neighbourhood houses from, from Reservoir through to, to Thornbury, Preston and uh, to, uh, to Northcote are very important vital parts of our community capacity building. And they do need um, support in terms of the housing and we have supplied that um, with both uh, older established neighbourhood houses like Jaika Jaika and also with newer ones like the uh, Reservoir Neighbourhood House which we built from scratch with federal funds. So i um, delighted to uh, endorse this item. Thank you. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Probably just um, following up from Councillor Lawrence, uh, I would just say that um, I endorse this proposed investment and probably also just recognise that from time to time we do have these opportunities um, to invest in our neighbourhood houses um, because we know that for every dollar that we spend through our neighbourhood houses there's about a six dollar return to our community. Um, so this is a good investment by council and a great investment in our community. Thank you. If there are no further councillors would like to speak to or in against this item, I might ask for this item to be put to vote. All those in favour? That has been carried unanimously. Thank you. Can I ask for Councillor Rennie to please come back into the chamber? Councillor Lawrence. Uh, Mayor Williams, I'd just like to uh, declare a conflict of interest in this upcoming uh, point 11 of this item 9.1. Um, in that I have a family member living, have a general conflict of interest due to a family member living with a residential amenity close to this uh, facility. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. I'll just wait for Councillor Lawrence to evacuate from the chamber. Yes, Councillor Greco, I can see that your hand's up. Do you have a question to our officers? We'll just wait for Councillor Lawrence to leave. Councillor, Lawrence, uh, Councillor Greco, do you have a question to our officers? Uh, yes, I do, um, Mayor Williams. I, I note in the email that I've got, um, it's got two points eleven. One is to endorse the capital expenditure for the for the North Coast Golf Course, and the other one is to endorse the removal of one hundred thousand dollars for the North Coast Golf Course. Um, my amendment is for the removal of one hundred thousand dollars, so that's what I'd like to move as an amendment. I, I was asking, do councillors have a questions? Do you have any questions in reference to that first, yeah, Councillor Dimitri? Why this? Why, yep. why this two points eleven? I, okay, great. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Over to our officers who might be able to uh, answer that question. And if we can have our officers to kindly put that back up on the overhead so we can see that. So, councillors, we are looking at number 11, which is endorsed capital expenditure provision in the draft 2023-24 budget of the 100K for Northwood Golf Course to begin construction of the Eastern Path, subject to finalising design and further decision by council. Well, Hang on. Uh, okay, so you, did you have a question in reference to that? I, I asked my, I've already asked my questions, but I'll be moving an amendment in relation to that. In two parts. Three, Mayor. I think Councillor Greco, we need to put, I think Councillor Greco is amending part 11. We need to put Councillor Greco's amendment up and see if councillors have any questions in relation to the amendment. Is that correct, Councillor Greco? That's right, thank you. So, sorry, Mayor, I don't mean to be difficult, but there, there's a process issue here. Yep. There's, a, there's an item that's an officer proposed item. Councillor Greco's um, amendment is oppositional to the item. Um, my understanding is that the procedure is that we need to deal with that item. If Councillor Greco wishes to vote that item down, then he can put an alternative to that. But that's the item that's in front of us that we need to deal with first. And until, that, until there's a no, move it hasn't up, been there's moved no, or seconded, and I'm happy to move the item, Mayor, um, to get us underway. Happy to second. Okay, but Councillor Greco also wanted to move the item with his amendment. So, so as uh, through you, Mayor, uh, Councillor McCarthy, 
as the Mayor is calling for movers and seconders of these in part, I understand uh, the officer's recommendation under part 11 has not been moved and seconded. So Councillor Greco, as I understand it, has put his hand up and I'll check with governance to move something different in, in this on this occasion, but I'll check with governance. But I, I did also ask that if he had a question, so I didn't take it also, but he was saying he wanted to move it as the amendment. So it's not been moved or seconded yet and we're moving and seconding each part. I'll just get governance to make a comment there. Jacinta, could you help, please? Yes, through you, Mayor. Um, it is an officer recommendation. Councillor Greco is wishing to move a motion, which is different to the officers. Is he allowed to do that, or do I have to consider the officers' recommendation? No, no. He's allowed to move a motion that is different to the officer recommendation. Okay, so I've got you down as the Mayor mover, Councillor Greco, as the so, amendment. Um, um, Councillor Rennie? I, I, I'd rather not raise a formal point of order, Mayor, but you hadn't actually called for a mover to the motion and therefore you've denied procedural fairness to every other councillor in this chamber who also wished to move a motion because you hadn't called for a mover of a motion yet. Okay, I'll I'm go just back. trying and to avoid say, a situation where we all yep, jump the gun and all fine. try and say beforehand, yep. me, 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 when yep. you haven't called. So, do I have a mover on this item? Happy to move. I, I'll move the, I'll move the, the item with an alternative motion. So, I had Gaetano and Councillor McCarthy at the same time. Um, it, it, either way, it's going to get one way or the other. I'll go with uh, Councillor McCarthy as a mover and Councillor Greco as a seconder. Me, you might uh, want to, I don't want to. I thought I was the mover of an, an alternative motion. So you had two people trying to move at the same time with yep. Councillor McCarthy and Councillor Greco. You, want to, you have to pick who you want to move first. If you're picking Councillor yep. McCarthy, you'll need a second. If you're picking. Okay, so Councilor I'm going to go with Councillor McCarthy as the mover, um, as what's on the recommendation on the screen. Who would like to be the seconder regarding that? I've got uh, Councillor. Yep. Nervines, I have a question. Sure. If, um, just from a procedure perspective, and I'm disappointed that, um, given that I had my hand up to move an alternate motion, but putting that aside, if um, if the motion that Council McCarthy is moving, if that motion is to fail, then then will I be able then to move an alternate motion? You can foreshadow. An amendment, Councillor Greco? Right. And if you, you, you can motion, foreshadow an alternative amendment, sorry. Yeah, and if, and if Councillor McCarthy's motion is successful, um, would, that, would that therefore mean that I would not be able to move a, um, an alternative motion in regards to that? that? That is correct, but how about we deal with one item at a time? Okay. All right, that's great, thank you. Councillor McCarthy as the mover, and I have Councillor Rennie as a seconder. Th thank you, Mayor. Um, councillors would uh, recall the decision that Council made last year, which was to commit to a model um, of shared use at the Northcote Golf Course. Central to that model was about increasing access for um, our diverse community to be able to access the new park, um, which is adjacent to the Waquak Bridge area, and also to be able to travel safely from the Mayor Park area um, along what's referred to on screen as the Eastern Path. As any councillor and any community member who would have been down to the site would know, we do not have an Eastern Path at this stage. In fact, we have uh, effectively a goat track. And that's fine for someone like myself, who is, has two legs and is capable of walking long distances over rugged terrain. But that is not the experience for everyone in our community. That's not the experience for those who wheel. That is not the experience for those with mobility issues, those who need to make their way over what is sometimes rugged um, dirt track, and in some cases, unmade and sometimes even dangerous um, track for people. If this council is as committed as I believe it is, as it says so in its policies, to ensuring and improving mobility for all, then that, what comes with that is actually investment in the infrastructure that delivers that. At the moment, um, those sites are inaccessible for many people in our community who are denied the opportunity 
um, to make their way safely through that section to enjoy what is a wonderful space for so many. What the eastern path will do, should it be constructed, and it could be constructed, it could have been constructed, in fact, in the next couple of months, but I'll put that to the side, it can be constructed very early in 2024. What a wonderful gift that would be to give to our community, particularly those who rely on wheelchairs, who have mobility issues, and, uh, and aren't as, um, as, as privileged as I am to be able to walk around and to walk over rugged uh, environments. What a wonderful gift that would be for people, particularly my own constituents at Veronica Gardens, many of whom have said to me, I love to look out at the new um, area there. I love, I'd love to be able to get down to the park area and sit there because I live just next door, but I can't because I can't walk over through that dirt and over that particular goat track. At the moment, those residents are denied that opportunity. And I remember there were many councillors in this chamber um, just last year that talked about the opportunity we would provide for older, vulnerable and less mobile residents. I want us to do that as a council. I think we've made that commitment. I think it's time for us to get on with delivering the, what we committed to last year, councillors. And should this um, not pass, then we will be denying those residents that mobility opportunity, that enjoyment of open space, um, until at least later next year. Late 2024, probably not even in this council term. What a shame that would be. I urge your councillors to support this motion. Councillor Rennie, I believe that you're the seconder. Would you like to speak on the item? Um, thank you, Mayor. I'll reserve my rights. No problem. Councillors, are there any other councillors who'd like to speak on the item? Councillor Newton. Yes, I'd like to speak in support of this item. Uh, Council Williams and I spent a number of years on the Darabin Disability Advisory, Me Advisory Committee together, which is an advisory committee that focuses completely on access for people who wheel, people who walk, people who ride. And this path would be very much welcomed by that committee. And as chair of the Darabin Disability Ability Advisory Committee, I would really hope that Council Williams will support this path going ahead. Thank you. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak on the item? Councillor Greco. Point of order, Mayor. Uh, excuse me, Councillor Greco, I have a point of order. And your point of order is? Um, valid points of order under 10.1G is misleading or false statement. Uh, specifically, the suggestion that the money wouldn't be spent. Um, this money will be spent in the same kind of timing as everything else in the budget. Um, and 
you could clarify that with uh, Mr Hewitt as Manager of Capital Works. Thank you. Can I ask you to withdraw your, what your statement regarding that the money will not be spent? Just to clarify, I said the money will not be spent until the... Do I get clarification off Sam? Um, three Mayor, um, Mr Hewitt, when would the money be spent just for clarity for the Mayor to assist her with the ruling? Thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor, um, assuming officers are able to get the necessary design work back to councils by November 2023, which was the, the council's resolution, assuming council was of a mind to continue with the works, uh, we would probably then go to market sometime in early 2024. It is subject, of course, to possibly some additional funding to complete the path. So we would either time the works to start in 2023, 24, to finish in 24, 25, if you understand. It's subject to market testing of those works, but we'd be ready to go early in 2024. I think, think Councillor Greco has clarified that he was referring to the money being spent in the, in the, this, calendar, in this, in the yeah. calendar year 24. So, Councillor Greco, you were trying to clarify or state that the money was going to be spent within this calendar year, as in 2023, and not from 2024 onwards. Would that be correct? Or the other way around, or the other way around uh, sorry. I was trying to say that the money um, would, um, would, would, uh, would probably be spent in 2024, and to clarify after hearing from uh, Mr Hewitt that the money would... Uh, most probably would be spent in the first half of 2024, but there is uncertainty around that. Okay, thank you for clarifying. I'm happy to move on. Councillor Greco, I think you had another 10 I'm seconds. Oh, stop, oh thank stop. Thank you. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak for or against? Councillor Hannan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd, um, I just want to be quite... Um, Frank here to, to ask the question, put it out there, why is this particular budget line, out of all the budget lines, this particular one being targeted to be cut? We've heard um, just now the rationale that we're, we're waiting for some kind of master plan that's going to give us an overview of the whole region. We dealt with this in the last meeting. That master plan is not coming. There is no such master plan um, scheduled. There is a, a plan for the golf course side of things, um, there is no master plan that's going to give us a new recommended path. Um, I would like to remind uh, councillors and everyone viewing in, obviously this, is, this item is one of the most contentious items this council has dealt with, certainly in my term. We've had thousands of submissions, we've had hundreds of hours of time spent on this. Um, we reached a compromised position. Largely, people have moved on. We've appointed a new operator. The new golf course is, operator is, is going well. Um, but continually, this, this particular item gets brought back to this chamber. A few meetings ago, we had insistence on appointing and um, seeking a report on how to spend the $200,000 which was offered, unsolicited, but offered by the state government. We moved ahead with that. When the agreed... Um, works offered by Sports and Recreation Victoria um, were provided. Um, we first agreed to that, and then that that was um, in the next meeting withdrawn and, and reneged on. Um, particularly, particularly with other items going ahead, but particularly with this one item being the path, the only item that was deferred and rescoped, and, and well, it was was put off. Um, now, it's the, this one item again, this path, keeps on being raised and it has to ask the question, why don't certain councils want this path to go ahead? I believe, my opinion is, it's because they don't want the park to go ahead. Your and time's it's simple up. As that. Thank you. Councils, are there any other further councils who would like to speak for or against the item? If there are no further speakers. Councillor Rennie reserved the right. Yep. Councillor Rennie, you'd like to speak now? Yep. Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. 
Councillors, I think that if we don't proceed with this item, we're at serious risk of attracting the attention of SRV who have um, already allocated $200,000 to Darabin City Council and where we have already negotiated with them and they have agreed um, to design and due diligence work uh, for this pathway and they've put $70,000 to that, uh, which council is spending. If we take money from SRV and then refuse to deliver the projects that they've given us money to plan for, we are at serious risk a of point of order, Mayor. And your point of order? Uh, point, uh, 10.1G, it's misleading and false. We aren't refusing to use the money for uh, deliver the, SR, the project that SRV has given us money for. Councillor Rennie, did you want to clarify? Um, SRV have specifically put $70,000 to design and due diligence of the Eastern Pedestrian Cycling Pathway, so that's a specific $70,000. Um, here we have in our budget a proposed $100,000 to deliver on this, so if we take this out, then we are refusing to deliver it. Um, SRV is only giving us money for design, which we um, the money is for design. It's not for our delivery. So this is just additional money that's sitting there for goodness knows what. Um, excuse me, Councillor Dimitriatis. I don't think... Can you please retract that statement right at the end, please? Fair enough. Thank you. I'll retract. Thank you. Councillor Rennie, you can continue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think I had about a minute 25 on the clock. As I was saying, um, this is not the first time this council has decided not to proceed with a project that SRV has given us money for. Um, this council determined not to proceed with Billoy Oval. So, excuse me, Mayor, that's completely false. 10.1G, we are proceeding. Um, what's order. your point of order? What's your point of order number? 10.1G, it's misleading and false. We are proceeding with the SRV funding. The funding is for design, which is what we've, we've passed. Please stop misleading everybody. I'm not going to permit any more point of order. I'm going to ask Councillor Rennie to please finish up and finish speaking. Not finish up, but please speak, finish in it. But I will not ask for any more points of what I will not accept them. Thank you. Or else we will not get past this item. Thank you, Mayor. The point I was making is that SRV gives money to council um, in anticipation of certain outcomes being achieved. They gave half a million to council in anticipation of an outcome at Billoy Oval. This council has determined not to deliver that outcome. They've given $70,000 for a path. If this council were to determine not to deliver on the outcome that that $70,000 of design work is intended to deliver, then we create a pattern which makes us uh, not look very appealing in terms of further funding. And I think this is therefore a bit of a threshold question in light of the governance issues we've had about how this council wants to be considered. Are we a council that takes money from government and fails to deliver on the intended outcomes? Or are we a council that maintains our promise to our funding bodies and to the community? Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Your time's up now. Thank you. If there are no further speakers, then I'm going to ask... No, you, you, were, you were the mover. Do I so... have a right of reply, ma'am? Oh, yes. Sorry, you have a right of reply. Apologies. That, that, no, no, no apology necessary, ma'am. You're doing a great job and under difficult circumstances. So thank you. Um, Mayor, I just would like to respond to, um, in particular to the, um, the comment made by Councillor Greco, uh, that he hadn't heard um, from residents uh, in relation to not being able to make their way uh, along what is currently uh, the goat track, um, although you can't take goats in there and, and nor should you, but um, currently a goat track f along the Northcote Golf Course eastern side. I, why, why would Councillor Greco hear about that issue? He's not the ward councillor. I'm the ward councillor. I hear about that issue. I speak to those residents. They speak to me. And mayor and councillors, I would ask for any councillor that's seriously considering not supporting this, I'd ask them to think how they justify, not just in relation to the government funding body question that Councillor Rennie raised, but also to those residents for whom we regardless of where they sat on this issue when we dealt with it last year, are expecting the council to get on with the job to end the games, 
to end the game. Can I ask you to please kindly yep. only discuss the agenda item Absolutely. and not yep. at councillors. Thank you. Absolutely. We have an item there that we have committed to delivering as part of the decision that we made last year. This is the funding to deliver that. If we do not fund this tonight, then what we are basically saying is that that work will not happen until the next council budget at the earliest, which means that that work would not be delivered until the 2024-25 year, and we are well and truly looking beyond this council term. And that's Point not... of order, Mayor. Sorry. No, I'm not going to accept any more points of order. I'm sorry. No, I've, I've enough. Thank you. I'll you end can it there, Mayor, up. and I'll say thank you for allowing the debate. But I think it's really important that councillors think about what message they send. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to have to ask for this item, please, to be put to vote. All those in favour? I have Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor Newton, and Councillor McCarthy. All those against? I have Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Messina, Councillor Williams, Councillor Greco. That's a draw. I'm going to say no from a mayor's perspective also. Sorry, so that has failed to get up as the officer's recommendation. Councillor Greco, I believe you have an amendment. Yeah, I have an alternative motion, to put Sorry, a, a, your face shadowing an alternative motion, correct. So for shadowing the alternative motion, which is in, endorse the removal of 100,000 for the North Golf Course and relocate that amount to include the 50K to scope out the lighting project for BT Connor, 20K to scope out for scoping for the migration monument, 30K for allocation towards holding the scale down homemade wine and food festival, meet the markers winemakers showcase and awards at the Preston Town Hall and request officers to provide options for this ahead of the June Council budget. So you're asking for a report or just a request officers recommendation, is that right? Yeah. Um, so it's to provide yeah, information, yeah. is it? Yeah, I just want to get some clarity on, on the wording there. Okay. The all right, no, no, no problem, thank you. And the last one is to reduce the draft capital works budget for 2023-24 by 30K to increase the draft operating projects budget by 30K to accommodate these changes. So you're moving amounts of money from capital works to go into the operations projects which is so you're going from 20, 30,000 from one area to 30,000 into another area. Okay, thank you. Um, no, hang on. I'm, I've just got Councillor Messina that has a question. So it's, this is question time now, and then I've got Councillor Dimitriadis. With Councillor Greco, that's what and means. just want to confirm with Councillor Greco first, that is your for shadow alternative motion, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, this is what I wanted to clarify in relation to point number, Roman number one, includes $50,000, 50000 to scope that lighting project at BT Connors. I understand that that could cover, the $50,000 could cover the BT Connors and also the, the John Kane boat, um, um, boat or two. Is, is that correct? Um, from the previous email that we received? Um, through you, Mayor, can we just get Sam Hewitt to just, I think there's a point of clarification he needs as well as um, just just uh, just so we can clarify what's being proposed here and give some advice to Council on Councillor Greco's question, please, Sam. Through you, Mayor. I'm standing here because the microphone picks me up from here. So, um, so I think we're talking about multiple projects, so it would be worth us trying to understand the BT Connor lighting project, I think it would be helpful to define what council's intending 
If you're talking sports field lighting, you should say so. If you're talking car park and street lighting and lighting to the entrance to Mary Creek, I think you should say so. So that's the first thing. Um, Mayor, I think Councillor Greco is talking about a whole other set of light, sports field lighting projects at Preston City Oval and John Kane Memorial Park. Um, and as I'm reading, I don't think that's included in either of 12 uh, four dot points. That is correct. So I, it's not I, included, yeah. It's not in, included. In the dot so, points. so, Mayor, um, I think for officers to deliver 12.1, I think you should, you, it would be worth adding uh, car park, street, and Mary Creek lighting to the description so officers know what to deliver. Yep, which is my understanding that's what it was for, so I don't have a problem in adding those as in the amendments. So can I check with Councillor Greco? Um, our officers have made recommendations to add in the next to BT Connor that that's actually, that lighting is for the car parking, for the street. It's not actual the LED lighting for the ground. Is that correct? Can we get some clarification for Councillor Messina on yeah. That is correct, but uh, my understanding it wasn't 50,000, my understanding it was less than 50,000 that, yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that the three projects had a total amount and it isn't for BT Connor itself it's, and there's advocacy involved in that with Gemini and it's just not council's expenditure moving forward. Okay, um, we're not entering the debate but we need to get proper clarification. The question. Okay, thank you. Sam? I, th I think through you, Mayor, we had provided, officers had provided some early advice um, that 30,000 might do the scoping and feasibility. Um, so we're confident we could do it for 30,000. Councillor Messina. I, I have hang a supplementary on, on, question, Gregor. sorry. I'm going to go can back I, to Councillor Messina Can I just Messina confirm first. through you, Mayor, it's 30,000 for, for the car parking and street at Mary Creek Lighting, plus an extra 30,000 for Northcote Football Club and PCO. I just wanted to clarify that. Is, is for PCO and Northcote Football Club an extra 30,000 for scoping? Over to you, Sam. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in the event that uh, Council is looking for Preston City Oval and John K Memorial Park, Sports field lighting to be fully designed and tender ready, it's $50,000. 50 for those two projects alone? 50000 50, for Preston City Oval, John Kane Memorial combined, because we're doing combined packages there. So in the event that you wish to take those two projects through to tender, it's a total of $50,000. For clarity purpose, I have a supplementary. So it's it's sorry about this, Mayor, but it's thirty thousand for one, and then an extra fifteen for for the BT. So it's forty five. So it's uh, fifty five thousand. Is that correct? No. Um, no. Uh, so I have thirty plus is fifteen. 50, forty five is just for PCO and John Kane. So forty five. That's fifty. Yep. And BT Connor, I have down here as twenty five. Was that right? Thirty. Thirty. Sorry. That's right, but PCO and John Kane is not in here. Correct. So you need to clarify with Councillor Greco. So I need to cl clarify with Councillor Greco exactly that's what your amendment is that's showing on the screen. You're foreshadowing that alternative motion. Yep. So, so 80,000, 80,000. Fifty thousand to scope BT Connor Car Park Street in Mary Creek Lighting, um, an extra 50,000, sorry, an extra 35,000, sorry, 30,000 for BT Connor 
car park in street and Mary Creek lighting and an extra 50000 for Preston City Oval scoping. So you're, and you're foreshadowing another amendment on top of this amendment is what no, you're asking. No, Councillor Greco asked me for clarification and I've just provided that. No, clarification was about the BT Connor. So clarification whether you, where's your lighting you would like for the BT Connor? For Mayor, the clarification okay, is Okay, thank you 000. very much. Through you, Mayor, if I, if I can assist. Councillor Greco, based on that advice, you need to amend the 50k in the first stop point to 30k. That gives you another 20k to not allocate or allocate from the Northcote Golf Course money, as far as I read that. Is that correct, uh, based on the advice? Uh, so, Mr. through you, Mayor, Mr. Hewitt has confirmed that the 50k should be 30k. Yes, that's right. So, so you've got thirty k, twenty k, and thirty k, which adds up to eighty k. There's another twenty k there, which could remain unallocated. In which case, I just need to, or you could allocate it to something else in this amendment. But it's your amendment, sir. So, in terms of the extra thirty k, Mr. Hewitt, no, extra twenty k. Three member. Um, so you could not allocate it or you could put it to one of the existing items, which is probably the, based on the costing of the homemade wine and food festival. My recommendation would be to add that 20k to the 30k because I believe the costing for that was around 75k. You're asking for a cheaper option. Um, by, by adding it to the food and wine festival and taking that from 30k to 50k, you're probably going to get a better festival. Um, and it also balances out. And given that we're bringing a report back on that, you still have an option to vary that if you believe that 50k is too much when it comes back to you. If I can assist, Mayor, then um, you need to address 4-2 uh, as well, please, Georgie, to drop the capital works by 50 and increase the operating projects by 50 to accommodate that change as well. That all lights up now, Councillor Greco. So include 30,000 to scope out lighting projects at BT Connor, Car Park, Street and Mary Creek Lighting. Two, include 20K for the scoping out for the migration monument. Three, allocate 50K towards holding a scaled down homemade wine and food festival, meet the makers, wine making, showcase and awards at the Preston Town Hall and request officers to provide options on this ahead of the June Council meeting. And four, reduces the draft capital works budget from 2023-24 by 50k and increase the draft operating projects budget to by 50k to accommodate these changes. Now the only other thing that was discussed was PCO and John Kane which is not in this. That Two, those two items alone is 50k, which goes over. Do we need to adjourn to get past this point? Or Perhaps I can assist, Mayor. Um, through you, Mayor, um, you have another go at this on final budget, and you can look at options between now and the final budget if you want to bring forward the, the lighting scopes for the other two ovals. We could work through that over the next two weeks in terms of putting those back into the final budget um, and, and taking something out so you have a balanced capital works if that's, if that's what councils wish to do rather than trying to do it on the fly tonight. Do I have a seconder for this item? Councillor Messina. Uh, yep. You have questions? Okay, we'll go back to questions. Sorry, but 
Cancel Han and then I have cancer Demetriatus. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just given it's the first time I've seen this, some of this is unclear to me. Apologies for um, not being able to ask questions to the staff beforehand. Um, so I have three questions actually. First one is just uh, checking. Uh, the point now, number 11, are we actually removing $100,000 from the Northcote course? Or is it, just to be clear, are we removing money allocated to the path? Second question. Um, second question. Um, items, sub-items one and two related to BT Connor and the Migration Monument. Um, apart from, so we're, we're proposing to scope out to a scoping project here, but are there actually, is there actually any money, um, any budget allocation under the capital program in future years for these projects? So, we, you know, um, apart from the scoping, is there actual an allocation in the future budget years to do the work? And third question, um, if so, what level of prioritisation um, uh, would these projects be in relation to other projects in the capital works budget? Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Uh, in relation to point 11, yes, it feels uh, like some words are missing there. So it's possibly endorsed the removal of $100,000 from Council's draft capital works program um, pr from the Northgate Golf Course. Uh, in relation to uh, 12.1, uh, officers believe that this is a three-staged project. We think scoping and feasibility in the first stage. We we don't run street lighting here. We, we'd have to engage with uh, the, the authorities. We'd have to understand the scope of the, the project. This would be a scoping stage only. Once officers report it back to the council, uh, we'd be seeking money for design and then seeking money to construct. And it's possible a, a substation would be required. So at this stage, there is no future money in the Capital Works Program for either design or construction of any car park street or Mirror Creek lighting at BT Connor. Uh, in relation to priorities, I think, councils, uh, that's a question for you. Councillor Dimitriatis. Um, I just wanted to clarify, based on discussions previously, oh, oh sorry, that if we um, put up an amendment tonight for the budget, for the draft budget, we can also put up an amendment, the same amendment for the um, budget in June when it comes to, um, for, um, to be endorsed in June. Correct. We do have endorsement on the 26th of June. And that's despite it, um, the governance rule saying that we can't actually bring it up within six months, the same item. Mayor, I think we should just get some governance advice on that, just for clarity, please. Sorry. Um, sorry to interrupt there, Mayor. There was a difference. The question was, can we do an amendment? But now it's, is it in reference to an amendment for an item that's coming up tonight? Sorry, over to you. Through you, Mayor. Um, yes, at the 26th of June council meeting, there can be amendments made to the, the budget before being adopted. Oh, with yes, I understand that. But can the amendments be exactly the same as what they are for this draft budget? If this if sorry, if this amendment gets through um, tonight, then it will be carried through to the 26th of June. If it does lose, then officers will be able to put um, an amend amendment up. So I think the question... Give clarification. So if it's because it's a, a budget and draft budget that we're able to have second dibs of the same item. That's right, through you, Mayor. Um, we need to... So it's going out for community exhibition. We do need to have a look at the feedback that's provided by the um, community and it may be that, you know, they want this to occur and so we would have to accommodate that. So, through you, Mayor, to be super clear for all councillors, if a councillor moves an amendment tonight and it fails, because you are moving an amendment to put something out to the community, 
when you get the final budget back, it will be a, it'll be a different item so you can move the same amendment again and try and get it up again. Is that correct? That's what you're saying? Yep. Does that answer your question, Councillor Mediatis? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I also uh, wanted to foreshadow a, um, an amendment on um, Councillor Greco's alternate motion. I did second it. Um. I'm sorry, that's not my amendment. Can you say what, you, what the amendment is you'd like Councillor Greco to consider? Um, so I haven't seen one, two or three. Um, we should adjourn. I'm going to ask for an adjournment. Um, we are at quarter past eight. Do you think we could do it in five? We, five. we need to do this in five minutes because we need to continue on as we have a large agenda this evening. Thank you. So we'll come back at 20 past eight. Um, so just basically this, but the, the project for John Kane to also include um, PCO. PCO and it's 500000 So you want to add 50 k for PCO and John Kane, yep. lighting scoping, and, and you want to add 50 k for...
Thank you to councillors. If you can kindly sit down, that would be greatly appreciated, and officers. Has the live streaming commenced again? Thank you. Yep, live streaming's back on, thank you. Okay, to our officers, can we kindly have what the amendments that we have on the, on the overhead? Councillor Greco, do you have that? Can you see that? That is correct. No, we're not voting on anything. I'm asking you, are they the amendments and changes and that is what you're looking at and you're happy with those amendments that's been put up as your changes that you were fores foreshadowing this evening your, as your alternative motion? Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, 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 let me just go through this. So, main the second, number 12. Um, Includes correct. Mayor, can I ask a question or two questions? Sure. Yeah. Councillor Newton, questions? Thank you. Uh, yes, I do have two questions about the new items that are in red, IV and V. Uh, so with Picture Park in Alfington, uh, I'd like to clarify, I understand that in terms of car parks of this nature, that Chris Park and J.E. Moore Park might be a higher priority or larger need uh, than Picture Park. And the other question I have is that we have now removed 100K for Northcote Golf Course, but we have now reallocated 30K, 20K, 50K, 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 which adds up to $200,000. So do we need to remove something from somewhere else? Thank you. Um, I have both Councillor, uh, sorry, I have uh, Sam that's happy to move, uh, sorry, happy to speak on your first question and the CEO will speak on the second part of that question. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I won't move anything, I assure you. Uh, to answer the first question, Council has about six or seven uh, gravel or unsealed car parks supporting sports fields through the city. Um, Officers have previously advised we don't consider though any of those to be a high priority for sealing. In the event that the council chooses to seal one or more of the car parks, we think that there are higher priorities than this car park to seal. But again, to make the point, we haven't prioritised sealing car parks in council's capital works budget or the recommendation that we've made to you. Thank you. Question two, over to you, Peter. Um, yes, the effect of this um, proposal increases um, both the capital works and operating projects budget by, f by 100K. Um, part uh, five, it may be that um, in the final budget you can defer some of that increase by coming back with a project that can be... Uh, that can reduce that 50k increase in the capital works because the report's been called for. But in essence, you're increasing both the capital works and operating project budgets in your draft budget that goes out until other savings are found to balance them back down to your initial amount. So can I kindly get clarification on number five? Because it says ceiling of the car park. So, sorry. But then it says um, report a budget briefing. 
So, through Mayor, we understand that for the draft budget for con consultation, uh, that this is proposing to allocate the, the 50k in the draft budget. We will bring the councillors asked for the, the, the proposed motion asked for us to bring a report back and to see if there's anything that can be deferred or stopped at a briefing, which could be put into the final budget to, to bring that capital works down by 50k to offset that extra 50k, which we'll do ahead of the final budget meeting in June. Sorry, Mayor. I th can I just... Councillor uh, McCarthy? Well, I think we're out of order at the moment. Um, Councillor Lawrence has declared a conflict of interest in relation to um, what is number 11. However, we are now debating and discussing elements of number 12. Councillor Lawrence, as, I, as far as I understand, does not have a conflict in relation to anything in number 12 that he's um, dealing with. So I would like to ask Mayor, in the interests of natural justice and procedural fairness, if we deal with item 11 first and then deal with item 12 so Councillor Lawrence can be here for item 12. Sure, we can do that. That's the very point that I raised in an email that I've just sent to Councillors. Okay, thank you. So we'll deal with number, item number 11 first, and then... Just need to check with the mover and seconder that you're both happy with those changes. And that's and, and we're Councillor able to Greco. vote. And, and we're able. Uh, Councillor Greco, you're still on mute, but we will take them in part, one part at a time. Thank yeah, you, Mayor. I just, sorry, Item number 11, we're doing a hundred thousand dollars for the Northfield Golf Course. I'll be moving that, yes. All right, so let's deal with item number 11 first, as in for Councillor Greco's for shadow alternative motion on endorsing the removal of the hundred thousand from Council's draft capital works program for Northcote Golf Course. I'm going to ask for that item to be put to vote now because I think we've gone around in circles quite a long time already. So I'm going to ask for that item to be put to vote. All those in favour? That is Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Greco, Councillor Messina and Councillor Williams. I'm going to use my casting vote and I'm also... Uh, sorry, and all those against? I've got Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor Newton and Councillor McCarthy. I'll have to use my casting vote. I've decided that I'm happy to, to have the 100,000 taken out of the Northcote Golf Course as I would like to ensure that all the plans and um, reports come back later in the year. I believe that we can still go through at the second half of, uh, of the budget that we can look at halfway through. So I'm going to go over to the next item. Oh, I'll get Councillor Lawrence in and we'll move on to the next item, which is item number 12. So it's allocating that 100,000 plus to the following. Mayor, I have a further question. Sure, Councillor Rennie. Um, thank you. Uh, the CEO spoke about um, a report coming back to talk about what project could be deferred, so that would be what road may not be sealed. Um, uh, at what point would councillors know which road might miss out on resealing um, should the picture car park park go ahead? Um, I think, uh, through Mayor, this motion calls for us to bring that to a briefing ahead of your final budget, so we'd endeavour to try and prioritise both the roads and infrastructure programs down to your budget envelope and you'll be able to see what's just below the line, which will be the one that comes out uh, or the work that comes out if you uh, decide to, to go... This puts Pitcher Park in there. If you want to offset some of the increase in the capital works, uh, we'll workshop with you in a briefing what you could take out of the programs. may not exactly add up to 50k, um, but would we'll work through with that and give you that advice prior to final budget report going out to the community. We'd need to do it before then. 
Um, thank you. And further, um, we haven't determined or have no information about where the additional 50000 would come from, which is also in excess of the budget envelope. Uh, I'll take that as a statement. That's correct. Um, we'd need to adjust the long-term financial plan as per your previous resolution. This would be one of those amendments where I'd have to get the pen out and adjust it and put the extra funding in um, before we get the draft budget documents out to the community. Councillor Dimitriatis. Um, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to clarify, because uh, point three, four and five say allocate $50,000, and particularly point three, it says um, request officers provide options and it's just an allocation, does that mean that it could technically be removed from the budget once the officers have provided options, which also relates to option five, because it's just allocating 50,000, so it could technically also be removed once the report comes back. Uh, through you, Mayor, for consistency across all points, we should probably put the word include rather than allocate across all points, if the mover and second are happy with that. So yeah. we are clear that in your decision on this, you're including it in the draft budgets. George, you can, if the mover and second are happy with that clarification, I'd suggest it. Councillors, are there any other questions? Councillor Lawrence. Um, just, um, Mayor Williams, just been out for a while now, um, just trying to get my head back into where we are. Um, if this item 12 fails, where do we pick up the budget? How does the budget go forward now? Are we halfway through it or are we three quarters way through it? Where are we now? I'll ask our CEO to answer that, maybe. Um, if this fails, you've already moved part 11, so you've got 100 grand less in your capital. Um, if this fails, there's no change to these items in terms of what's proposed. So the draft budget, apart from the 100 grand that's been taken out for the North Cook Golf Course Eastern Path, would, would go out for consultation. Councillors, I'm going to ask to have uh, number 12 to be voted on as each individual line item separately in going forward. Excuse me, Mayor, I hate to be... Um, nobody's spoken to any of the items. We don't have to speak to the items. Is that what...? OK. But I will need to mo need a mover and a seconder for each, each item. So... No. Okay. So I'm taking Mayor, the part. I, so sorry, with apologies. These are significant items, and I believe they want debate. I wouldn't suggest debating each of them. I would suggest one debate and separate votes. But I do think they are too significant to not debate. Not a problem. I'm happy to have a mover and seconder, and anybody in opposition to speak in in the item if they wish. Gaetano, I've requested to, if it's possible, to have it done separately as councillors find that, that it needs to be debated, debated on each individually as they were are quite, um, well... Okay. 
So Gaetan, I'll have you as the mover and Councillor Messina as a seconder. I'm going to go forward that you can speak on the item and then we're going to vote them on individually. So over to you, Councillor Greco. Okay, thanks, um, Mary. Councillor Messina, as you've been the seconder, would you like to speak on the item? Reserve my right. Thank you. Are there any councillors would like to speak in opposition or for? Councillor Lawrence, and then I've got Councillor Hannan and then Councillor Newton. Thank you, Mayor Williams. Um, look, um, I appreciate um, that we're having open debate about uh, a series of items that are um, looks like it's about 200 or more than 200 or 300,000 um, in both the operational and the um, capital budget. As I said before, my initial assessment three and a half years ago was that three decisions of council that we're planning to do would cost us 20 million. <coughs> Actually, in the forward estimates, it's going to cost us $61 million in deferred capital works in this city that should have happened. So, um, as I have argued, we should have been able to make $130,000 available for a homeless project. That didn't get through the various caucuses, the various sub-factions, micro-factions and whatever in this place. Um, and, of course... We are taking a big step to break down our capital works to only 30 million for two years and 35 million in the third year. Obviously, that will be the legacy to the next council. So we're starting the journey back to common sense. Um, I'm not sure this long debate on 200,000 uh, actually dignifies how serious this budget is. I obviously feel that um, helping the homeless is more important uh, than nearly anything on that list. 
At the same time, I do not want to <laughs> use my vote as a bargaining chip to put this council back into its flip-flop pattern. So I'll be supporting this, but don't expect my support on budget night. Councillor Hannan, I have you down as next speaker. Thank you, Mayor Williams. Um, I, uh, I, I disagree with the framing um, that this was presented, um, that a budget is about councillors basically competing against each other and making compromises. We are here to serve our communities, the, the Darwin community as a whole, and we have a financial duty to, as a steward collectively for the organisation of Darwin City Council, which is why we have been through months of workshops, briefings, discussions, to reach a point that is both financially sustainable and um, delivers on our priorities. Um, we have items included here. I have to say, three items put here by the councils representing those wards for the southeast ward, the uh, northwest ward, and the central ward. Three items, well, items which were not recommended by staff, by management, which are based on an objective assessment. Um, in relation to Pitcher Park, of course, we would, if we had budget, we would like to uh, do, you know, uh, reseal a lot of areas around Darabin, but the fact is they're not a priority. We've been told, we've been advised, this is not the top of the priorities. There's been no reason or evidence base provided as to why these particular projects, other than a particular councillor wants them in. Never mind, as Councillor Lawrence has said, the tough decisions that have been made in um, for the community and for the sake of the council, this basically, without any other real evidence provided, is just certain councillors want these things in and really no regard for what it does to the bottom line, even if it takes us $100,000 over. I won't be supporting it. Thank you, Councillor Hannan. Do I have any other councillors? Councillor Newton, Councillor Rennie. So Councillor Newton first. Thank you, Councilor Mayor Williams. I'm strongly against item 12. So we had an opportunity to reset tonight. We had an opportunity to pass a council budget and put it out for consultation without any amendments. So we had an opportunity to do that. We have not done that. We have been on this one item for over an hour. Uh, we have chosen to withdraw a thousand K from the Northgate Golf Course item. We are putting a grant at risk. We have put other grants at risk by not going forward with other projects. And this is irresponsible to put up $100,000 plus another $100,000 that we don't have. That is an irresponsible way to put out a budget. I'm really unhappy about this. I'm, ha I'm unhappy that tonight is the night that the monitor's report is being tabled and this is the way that councillors are choosing to do this. I'm really disappointed by that. If I was a different councillor, I could say, let's put up an amendment to say that Chris Park in Reservoir should get a $50,000 allocation to the ceiling of the car park in the 23-24 budget. I will not be doing that because I care about the entire community. I care about merit. I care about good governance. I care about the whole community. I'm not interested in the games of this ward compared to this ward. I'm not interested in that. We have a report table tonight from the Monitor that says the first council meeting he attended lasted over five hours despite, despite a small agenda. Quote, it was in my opinion an example of a poor decision making process. We have a report that says that the council sometimes really struggles to reach a final agreed position. There's a culture of multiple and quite often complex amendments being proposed in meetings. This results in a risk of decisions that can be open to different interpretations as to what they mean, end quote. I'm tired of the way that this council operates. I'll be voting against this item. Thank you, Council Newton. I'm going to have these items now to be put to vote. I, I know, I apologise, but we are running very late. I have the final decision. I'm putting the items to vote. I'm going to ask for the first item to include 30... Um, I have. I've had Councillor Rennie, I've had Councillor Greco and Councillor Lawrence, so thank you. I'm going to have the item put to vote. The first item to include 30K 
to scope out the lighting projects at BT Connor Car Park Street and Merry Creek Lighting. All those in favour? Councillor Dimitriadis in favour, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, Councillor Williams and Councillor Greco. All those against? I have Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor Newton and Councillor McCarthy. Second item, in, so that has, been, uh, that has been carried, thank you. Second item, include 20k for the scoping out for the mi migration monument. All those in favour? Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, Councillor Greco and Councillor Williams for the item. All those against? Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor Newton, Councillor McCarthy. That item has been carried. Item number three, include 50 cades towards holding a scaled down homemade wine and food festival, meet the makers, winemakers showcase and awards at the Preston Town Hall and request officers to provide, it's gone off screen, to provide options on this ahead of June Council meeting. All those in favour? I have Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, Councillor Greco and Councillor Williams. All those against? Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor Newton and Councillor McCarthy. That has been carried. The next item is to include 50k to in continue the lighting projects at John Kane and Preston Civi Oval. All those in favour? I have Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina and Councillor Greco. All those against, I have Councillor Hannan, Councillor Newton and Councillor Rennie and Councillor McCarthy. I abstain, so that has not been carried. Item number five, which is include 50K for the ceiling of the car park at Pitcher Park at Elfington for the 23-24 budget and receives a report for briefing about the project if it can be deferred or stopped to ensure that this project proceeds. All those in favour? I have Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Lawrence and Councillor Greco. All those against? I have Councillor Hannan, Councillor Rennie, Councillor Newton, Councillor McCarthy and Councillor Messina and myself abstain. So that has not been carried. Next item. We just need to change the words on this to reduce this now because it's consequent on the decisions above. But sorry, Mayor. Mm -hmm. I just need to reduce the draft capital works by 50 Because there were a couple of items that did not get through, that therefore the capital items on this last item will need to be amended for this to be voted through. So we're just going to change those items on that last uh, amount. The next item is to reduce the draft capital works budget for 2023-24 by 50k and increase the draft operating projects budget by 50k and accommodate these changes. All those in favour? I have Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, Councillor Williams, Councillor Greco, Councillor Dimitriadis, is your hand up? Yes. And all those against, I have Councillor Hannan, I have Councillor Newton and Councillor McCarthy against and Councillor Rennie abstains. Uh, that item has also been passed. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item. Councillors, we'll need a procedural motion to extend tonight's meeting because we've wasted quite a number of hours just going through two items. Um, can I ask for a procedural motion? Councillor Lawrence and Councillor Messina. So we're extending time. Thank you. Can we please have that put to vote? All those in favour? I have Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Hannan, Councillor Newton, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina and Councillor Greco, Councillor Williams and Councillor Rennie against or abstain? And Councillor Rennie votes against it. Thank you. I have the next item, which is 9.2, revise the council plan 2021-25, incorporated. I'm sorry, I have a question. What about the rest of the budget? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let me find where I'm at. Apologies.
Councillors, we're going to put part three and four together. So if you get a moment to look at that, and then I'm going to ask for a mover and a seconder. There's three pages to, to this, or was actually more than that. So we got part three and part four. Part four has three pages. How many pages does part three have? Okay, councillors, we're going to be voting on item number 12. Sorry, what? Oh, apologies. Because of the changes, they're being renumbered. So I'm going to read out these items, which is endorse the draft budget 2023-24, incorporating the four-year budget and associated fees and charges in Appendix D, to resource the 23-24 Council Plan Action Plan Council Works Program Appendix E and Operating Projects Appendix F to proceed to community exhibition. Um, and the next one I have is note that the draft 23-24 budget incorporating the four-year <coughs> budget will be considered for the adoption at the Council meeting held at 6pm on Monday the 26th of June 2023. Note that the part of 2023 and 24 budget submissions process does diverse sort. The 30,000 funding for the food relief officers have identified 15,000 in the current 2022-23 budget that will be allocated as a one-off grant to diverse for food relief across the, our community. Councillors, I'm going to ask for a mover and seconder on that items. Uh, three, Mayor, for clarity, it was the, in the published papers, it was the old points 9, 10 and 11 that had been moved and seconded now whilst we're just getting it on the screen for you, Councillor Rennie. Uh, Mayor Williams, I, I just had a question before we move these um, items. Sure, Councillor Greco. Uh, just through, through you to the CEO, just in terms of seeking clarity, 
over the reservoir leisure centre, <coughs> where is that included as part of the um, the council budget papers that we are endorsing? I'm just seeking some advice on through me through me. I'm just seeking advice for you, Councillor Greco. I, I think we're all a bit confused at the moment. We're just trying to make sure we don't it's miss no, anything. I think here. because that was an amendment regarding yep. the reservoir leisure centre, so it's being separately. We know you want to do something there, Councillor Greco. Just give us a second. We'll come back to you. Sure, no Uh, through you, Mayor, Councillor Greco, to make sure you have those words as you've given us, you would just put this as an amendment to the, the 13 that's on your screen now, if that's what you'd like us to do. So when the Mayor moves 13 and 14, or when the Mayor calls for a move of 13, 14 and 15, you could put those words in as an addition to point 13 as you see it on the screen now. I hope that helps. And if you want to do that, we have the words here. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I'm happy to do that. Uh, sorry, I would like to disagree because I'm not going to be supporting the draft budget, but I'm happy to support the RLC in the draft in the budget. So, um, Gaetano, if you'd want to put it in separately as a separate item. Okay, so we'll move on. Yep, so do I have a, a, a mover for 13, 14 and 15? I have, I know it's Councillor Greco, also Councillor Hannan. Um, because I believe he, Councillor Greco has an amendment for the item. What do you want me to do? Uh, Councillor Hannan had his hand up first. All right. Um, he needs a seconder, and then if Councillor. Okay, Councillor Hannon. Would you like to move the item that's on there at the moment, number 13, 14 and 15, and I'll need a seconder. Um, yes. Do I have a seconder on the item? Well, then that laps, doesn't it? Then I guess. Then I have to ask if we there's an... Ob then we won't have Can a budget to go to consultation. Councillor Greco doing an amendment or not? It was an amendment. He foreshadowed an amendment. 
So yeah, I, I thought I was moving it with an amendment. I'm not sure where Councillor Hannon came into the picture. Through you, Mayor, Councillor Hannon had his hand up first. He moved it as printed. He didn't get a seconder, so the Mayor could ask you to move something different. Um, Councillor Greco, and you could move it with your amendment in it now. No, no, okay, now I'll move it with my amendment. Thank you. Hang on, we're just trying to get your amendment up and then we'll have to ask for a seconder for it. Thank you. I'm not sure, Councillor Greco, is that your wording? Can you confirm? Yes. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for the item? Councillor Messina. Councillor Greco. Um, yeah, just very quickly, uh, we're, we're endorsing the budget regarding the inclusions that we've made. The budget's going to go out for um, public consultation. Um, I think we've had enough debate on the budget, so I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Councillor Messina, do you have... Uh... I reserve my right. Okay. Councillor Dimitriadis. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm, I'll be, I'm not actually supporting this draft budget, um, and that's for a number of reasons. We have had um, months of briefings and discussions, but not all the questions have been answered, in my opinion, and not all of the information has been given to us. So firstly, many projects and services have been cut from what was originally promised, such as the much-needed Bill Laurie Oval upgrades. Councillor Dimitriadis, can you kindly please speak to on the agenda item and not just in general at the moment? Yes, I'm talking about the budget. So it, it's actually the Bill Laurie Oval was cut from the budget. So I'm saying that many projects and services have been cut from the budget and so therefore I'm not supporting it. And secondly, various projects that I believe are financially responsible and some of which um, are included in this budget against the office recommendations have been added in place of more essential services and projects such as funding for the homeless, which as Councillor Lawrence has stated, is something that we should be supporting. So therefore I'm really disappointed with this draft budget and um, I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dimitriadis. Any other councillors would like to speak for or against the item? Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Messina. Um, it's actually Mayor Williams, not Messina. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Habits. Um, Mayor Williams. <laughs> um, yes, look, I think, you know, there, this, this budget's tough all round, and I'm sure we're going to hear it back from the community when they do see $61 million worth of capital works they might have expected over the next three years just disappeared. But we have to actually take fairly drastic action to put financial discipline on this council going forward. Um, I, this is a draft plan. The community have an opportunity to come back to us. Um, there are a lot of people in sporting areas who are disappointed. There's people in social justice areas disappointed. Um, I saw we've included 15,000 for diverse, which is great because people are needing food out there. There's some serious hardship. Um, but we also need to make some commitments around uh, the future after this discipline is applied for a few years where we will be able to revisit things like Reservoir Leisure, Leisure Centre. So, yes, I'm not entirely happy with this draft budget and I reserve my right to listen to the community between now and when we vote for the formal budget, which we should. Um, which we always do. But in this year, it, it's serious cuts. We sh do have to go back to basics, so I'll be endorsing the draft budget, but if um, the community comes back with strong reactions to our priorities, I think we need to listen more carefully than ever.
I'm going to ask for councillors to have this item put to vote because we're running out of time. Mayor, my hand was up before councillor Lawrence's. Okay, councillor Rennie, I'll allow it. Thank you. I appreciate an opportunity to explain why for the first time in my whole time on council, it's my intention to vote against this draft budget. And that's not a decision I make lightly, and it's a decision I make in full understanding of possible consequences. I came tonight willing to vote for a budget that contained many things I didn't like and omitted many things that I felt should be included, but was the result of months of work and hours of everybody's time. And instead, this meeting has been turned into a circus by people who didn't respect those months of work and who continued to prosecute uh, amendments for things they'd been unsuccessful in persuading their colleagues to support over many months. I cannot support a budget that is make it up as you go, that denies all principles of good governance and that fails to really consider um, our priorities. Council Alliance is absolutely right. If we were going to take 100,000 out for the golf course, there's many things I would have heard, including a homelessness service. How is it we've landed here? It's because we've done it on the run. And that is fundamentally flawed and I don't want my name associated with it. And I say that with a, a significant level of regret and distress and I think it's a great shame that we've landed here. Um, there are consequences for, for this decision, you know, quite possibly that will attract the attention of the minister. And at this point in time, I would have to say I'm ashamed to be part of a council that treats a budget in this way. And based on what I've seen tonight, if I was the minister, I would be sacking the council and I don't think that would be unwarranted. And I say that with great regret, but that is, uh, those are my thoughts about where we've landed tonight. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Okay, I'm going to ask for this item to be put Mayor, to before vote. You, before you do, I need, I need some governance advice in light of what Councillor Rennie has said. If I can ask... If, if, if and your question is? My, my, question, my question is, if council does not... Um, if a motion is not successful to endorse, endorse the draft budget as... So the motion listed on screen, um, what happens then? Uh, three, Mayor, you are required... Um, to have a final budget by end of June. You're required to go out to engagement. Your engagement time is already limited. Um, there are a number of other councils that are out there already in the community with their draft budget. Deferring it tonight or not passing it tonight means that uh, we would run into potential to shorten the engagement time depending on when council are ready to come back and consider a draft budget. If you don't get a draft budget out for consultation, you fail to meet your obligations to consult with the community, as I understand it, under the Act. And if you don't pass the final budget, um, the only option you have would be to go to the Minister and ask for an extension, um, and uh, particularly given the Monitor's report, which is also on the agenda tonight, I, um, I would agree with Councillor Rennie's assessment that the Minister may decide not to give you an exemption or take some other course. Thank you. Councillor McCarthy? Um, Mayor, I agree with everything that Councillor Rennie said um, and completely um, support her assessment of the process tonight. Um, I'm going to take a different approach, which is that I'm going to support the budget to go on exhibition. But in doing so, I do that only on the basis that I, unlike Councillor Rennie, I, I want to see the, 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 the community have their opportunity to engage. Uh, Councillor Rennie absolutely wants to see that as well, but Councillor Rennie, like myself, was calling for us to go through a proper process tonight. We didn't go through that, Mayor, and uh, and I hope that all councillors will give some consideration to the inadequacy of the debate this evening, the amendments that were put to the floor. That's not how this is supposed to be done. Councillors have discussed this at length. I will put this out. Um, I will support this being put out for community consultation, but that is only because um, I'm prepared to put... Uh, that that principle before my deep, deep concerns about the practice this evening. And I would ask councillors to seriously consider how they conduct themselves in relation to this budget when it returns to us in June, um, because there are some serious concerns that have come up this evening about both process but also priorities. I 
I'm absolutely shocked this evening from councillors and the way councillors have been speaking to other councillors and disrespecting each other and not having amendments in earlier and having these discussions earlier. I think it's, it's quite um, disturbing from that perspective. I would have to agree with Councillor McCarthy that I'm only voting for this because I believe the community should have a say. It's their budget. It's not just our individual budget. We are here and elected, yes, from our ward, but we look after the whole city of Darabin, not certain parts of it, and not because we are after certain things that we want done or completed. But most of all, we need to treat each other with respect. And I don't feel we did this tonight. So I'm, I'm quite disappointed. Um, I'm going to ask for this item to be voted on. So all those in favour? I've got Councillor Hannan, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, Councillor Williams and Councillor Greco all against. I have Councillor Newton, all those abstaining, Councillor Rennie and Councillor Dimitriadis. So that item has been carried. I'm going to ask for part three and four, to, which is 13 and 14, and then three and four, apologies. Okay, so it's 14 and 15 to endorse the draft rates financial hardship policy and also to give accordance with the section 93 for the Local Government Act 2020. Fourteen, fifteen, and so, the whole part. so fourteen, fifteen, right down to. I have twenty-two here, but you're saying twenty-four. Oh, twenty-four because the amendments that we had. So, councillors, I'm going to ask to have that voted on for the item to be put to vote. I just have a question. Um, but we need to have a mover and a seconder first. So there's actually 25 points, I've just been told. Do I have a mover on the item? I have a question, Mayor Councillor Lawrence. Um, just when you were flicking through pages earlier, there was a section about um, um, uh, concession cardholder rebates, and I just had a question about that. Is, are we voting on that? Because it's not there. Yes, we are voting on that, which is the pensioners who are holders. So I just have a link and question through affairs. to the officers. Um, to clarify, because the wording I read, um, I got the impression that concession cards, concession healthcare cards, low income cards and concession cards were proof of a rebate. So do we actually offer a rebate to unemployed People. I just want to clarify that. Holders of Centrelink, are they unemployed people? Pensioners who are our, holders? Does our definition cover job seeker recipients? I'll ask our officers to please clarify. Thank you. Just a moment, Mayor. Thank you for the question, Councillor Lawrence. I'm just finding the specific wording for you in relation to that particular concession. Um, certainly the criteria remains the same as it was for the pensioner rebate that has existed in this financial and in previous years. So that criteria has not changed. Acknowledging there has been... There was an additional measure put in place during COVID in relation to um, elements of support. So I'll just find the specific wording for you in... What is quite a long report, my apologies. Um, 
Um, so, Councillor Lawrence, the specific eligibility criteria is for pensioners who are holders of an eligible Centrelink or Veteran Affairs Pension Concession Card or Veteran Affairs Gold Card, which stipulates TPI or War Widow for the curbside waste collection service charge, and it is the same criteria for the pensioner safety net concession also, not for healthcare card concession holders who did not previously receive the pensioner rebate, although they may have been eligible for some of the COVID measures that were in place for the 15 months um, during the previous financial year and first three months of this financial year. So just to clarify, because it was my impression job seekers don't get a concession in Darabin. Is that correct still? Thank you for the question, Councillor Owens. To be clear, the concession that is proposed for your consideration tonight is for pensioners only. That is the only... Can, sorry, that particular concession, which is replacing what was previously a pensioner rebate, is only for pensioners. There are concessions available for other elements relating to the curbside waste charge. For example, rate payers in households valued at $500,000 or less are eligible for a concession that has the effect of capping the curbside waste charge to $50 as a maximum increase. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Councillors, we need to move on. Do I have a mover on the items? Councillor Lawrence, do I have a seconder? Councillor McCarthy, thank you. Councillor Lawrence? Uh, uh, Mayor Williams, yeah, happy to um, move forward these components of the uh, budget, um, which we've heard about. Um, I appreciate tonight's been dragging on. Uh, I would flag that, you know, it's something maybe the community wants to think about giving feedback to this council because I know other councils are extending their rate rebates to unemployed. Um, and I know also that we have a large number of um, older women in particular who are homeowners and are on JobSeeker now that um, um, pension retirement ages have been changed and things. So, um, yeah, that's something... The community, it's up to the community, I suppose, now to give us feedback about whether we should be extending that pension rebate to that group uh, in, in the community. So, but fundamentally, this is a draft budget um, and we will be listening to uh, people giving feedback. And again, I'll be interested in the future to actually find out how much that would cost to extend that rebate to job seekers. But otherwise, I commend the motion to uh, councillors. Councillor McCarthy? Nothing to add, Matt. Okay, I'm going to put the item to vote unless you have objection. Anybody wants to talk in, in opposition? If not, I'm going to put the item to vote. All those in favour? That has been carried unanimously. I'll move on to the next item. But because we have a few items that must go through this evening, I'm going to ask councillors to join items number 9.2, I believe. Uh, three, Mayor, we need to do um, 9.2, definitely tonight. That should be quick. Uh, I think there may be some amendments just on wording in the council plan, but they can maybe wait till the final version. Um, 9.6, 9 9.7, 9 9.8, 13.1 and 13.2. Uh, we are calling another meeting on the 29th of May, potentially 9.3, 9.4 and 9.5 could be added to that agenda if Council wished to defer those tonight. Okay, so we've got... 
that we're going to vote on. I need a mover and a seconder. So we can Mayor, can I move 9.2 with my amendments? Yes, sure you can. Thank you. So can we then do 9 point... We'll come... We'll do 9.2 then first very quickly, if that's OK, and then we'll move the others as a combine. I also have an amendment for 9.2. It's just one word in the, ca in the, in the council. OK. Go ahead. Well, we'll move on to 9.2. Do I have a mover? Yes, with two amendments. Okay. Um, and I don't know what Councillor Messina's amendment is. So It just says deliver in relation to the annual cultural diversity social oration. So do our officers know sure. what that wording is for that? Yes, that yep. was circulated earlier by... Um, yep. Okay, yep. so it was just a couple of wording. I believe it was okay. Didn't yep. impact, it doesn't impact the budget between yours and yep. Councillor Messina. Mm -hmm. Can I speak briefly? Yes, sure. Yep. Thank you. Um, so we are looking at a revised council plan here um, and it is a shift from where we started in 2020 and 2021. Uh, we are in a very different space now. Um, so I think that where we've landed is reasonable in the circumstances that we have in terms of our financial position, in terms of what we've done and what we can do. Uh, the reasons why I'm including uh, item three and four uh, as amendments, or actually it's an alternate reclamation, is because um, I think this week particularly making sure that rainbow tick accreditation is still in there is very important. I was really moved by the Ida Hobbit week and day last week, um, never in my life have I seen something like last week at Northcote Library where there were about eight uniformed police officers that had to attend a rhyme time, a story time, um, because of protesters. I've never seen anything in my life um, and I was quite moved by it, but I think it's absolutely important to make sure that Darabin is continuing on with our LGBTIQA plus inclusion. So I think we do need to make sure Rainbow Tick remains there in the wording in the big action items. And with number four, um, you know, personally, if I had um, my way, I would love to see a lot more on active cycling, a lot more on sustainable transport. I've got a seven-month-old who's going to be on, on the back of my bike soon. I would love us to be doing more on active transport, but I acknowledge the situation that we're in. Um, but the reason why I've got this amendment at four is because I think if we don't report on something, we can't see it. We don't have oversight of it. And so I think it's very important um, to look towards safer streets. That's something I ran on in 2016 and 2020. Um, so I wanted to keep oversight of that through the council plan. And that's it. Thank you. Councillor Messina, do you have any comments or do you want to reserve No, for the purpose of going okay. through, no. No problem. Is there any councillors would like to speak in opposition? If not, then I'm going to put the item to vote. All those in favour? That has been carried unanimously, thank you. I'm going to move on to the items that we would like to put together, which is the procedural motion for... Oh, we need... OK, I need a procedural motion for another time extension. I have Councillor Hannan and Councillor Messina. All those in favour? I have Councillor Dimitriata, Councillor Hannan, Councillor Newton, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Greco and Councillor Williams. All those against? I have Councillor Rennie, Councillor Messina, where did you vote? I voted for, sorry. Okay. I'm going to have to ask for that again. Can we please uh, hands up for those for a procedural motion to move to, to extend time? Councillor Dimitriatis, Councillor Newton, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Hannan, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Messina, Councillor Williams and Councillor Greco. All those against? I have Councillor Rennie. And that's it. So that's been carried. Thank you. I'm going to ask for agenda items to be put together, which is 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 13.1 and 13.2. Um, do we have a mover for those items? No, and I need... Excuse, excuse me, Mayor, I had 13. an amendment for 9.8. Oh, sorry, 13.1 we can't put. So let's go again. So we're going to consider now is 9.6, 9.7, 9.8 and 13.1. Uh, 13.1 is confidential. 
provincial mayor. Oh, okay, it's just the three. 9.6, 9.7 and 9.8, thank you. Can we have a... Sorry, Mayor, I've indicated I had an amendment for 9.8. So you just do 9.6 and 9.7. All right, I'm just going to do 9.6 and 9.7 then. Thank you. Can Do I have a mover for 9.6 and 9.7? Or do I need a... Jacinda, if we're doing on block, can we do it in P3 as well? Can we do... Councillors, for a procedural motion to put on block is 9.3, 9.6, 9.7. Um, do I have a mover and a seconder for that? Councillor Hannan? Second. Do I have a seconder to move on block for those three items? Councillor Messina, all those in favour to move on block? I've got Councillor Dimitriata, Councillor Hannan, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Messina, Councillor Greco and Councillor Williams, all those against. I have Councillor Newton and Councillor Rennie and Councillor McCarthy abstaining. Do I have a mover for those three items, which is 9.3, 9.6 and 9.7? Councillor Hannan, do I have a seconder for the item? Councillor Messina, thank you. Would you like to speak on the item? Yes, yep, go um, ahead. Look, I'll be very brief um, in the interest of time. And um, look, I'm a bit loath to, um, to just focus on one area of the organisation performance when all areas of the organisation have done such an amazing job this year um, uh, under trying circumstances. I just wanted to spotlight for a moment on the uh, cap capital and operations um, area of council. There's a, a note in the in the um, in the re the quarterly report uh, over that we're on track to deliver over sixty million dollars of capital works, which is a remarkable achievement this year. Um, the vast majority of works completed are either they completed or are they on track, including big ticket items such as NARC, right down to renewal of footpaths and drains, planting thousands of indigenous plants and trees, maintenance of over 50 sporting fields and facilities. This is the team that attends storm damages and braves mysterious sinkholes seven days a week, um, and it faithfully provides objective advice to us as councillors and implements priorities, uh, no matter how contested or sensitive they are. So the whole organisation needs to be commended on this quarterly performance, but in the interest of time, I just wanted to focus on that one area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Messina? Nothing further. Nothing further. I'm going to have the item put to vote for those three. Mayor, can I just request that at a minimum, because I think this is you know, really problematic. At a minimum on the screen, we actually have the items that are being voted on, the numbers, so that anyone watching knows what's here. We know this is poor governance, so it would be better if we had some transparency about it. Yep, no problem. Okay, officers, can you kindly... Stephen. Yep, they're there, that those items are being voted on block. Uh, maybe put in who the mover is, which is Councillor Hannan, and the seconder is Councillor Messina. I'm going to vote for those items now. All those in favour? I have Councillor Dimitriatis, Councillor Hannan, Councillor Messina, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Greco and Councillor Williams. All those against? Councillor Newton and Councillor Rennie has abstained. Thank you. The next item I have is 9.8. I believe Councillor Messina has an amendment. Thank you, Mayor. I've circulated one earlier, but I've just um, amended it based on my conversations with... Um, the Director, Kylie Bennetts. Okay, do we... Oh, that's been sent to Brown. Uh, do I have a seconder for that item? I think and I think the councillors would like it on the board first. Before, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Georgie's just getting it up on our screen. Thank you. So, sorry, Mayor. Just a procedural not, uh, um, question. We've just dealt with three items... Can you just confirm, please, that we will be returning to 9.4 and 9.5 after 9.8? Because we haven't dealt with those items. So they're next in the order of business. You indicated that, that one. We 
where, because we have urgent items that have to be addressed this evening, we may have to go back to 9.4, 9.5 and bring that to another council meeting, which will be next Monday. In that case, Mayor, it's, it's incumbent upon us to have a procedural motion to, to do that. I don't think we've had a procedural motion to move to 9.8 at this stage. So I, apparently, as the chairperson, I can just move the items as I go. And at the moment, that's what I'm doing and going forward to get through tonight's agenda. We have that item up on the screen. Do we have a seconder for the item? Councillor Greco. Uh, Councillor Greco, thank you. Councillor Messina. Thank you. Just really briefly, Mayor. Um, my understanding is this um, amendment, uh, item number 12, will allow officers to begin renaming of Northcote Aquatic Centre and start the process. Um, there is an addition to that, which meant uh, in addition to renaming Preston and Reservoir Library. Okay, so yep. officers, can you kindly have that put up on the screen, the additional item? Just to, just to bring it along, yep. um, it's in relation to cutting costs rather than renaming and then starting the process again, so it's about bringing them forward. My understanding was that the operational budget did have two naming priorities or enough funding, and I've had confirmation that will cover the Preston Reservoir Library plus NARC, because Bill Laurie Lo Over will not be renamed during this financial year, hence why I've put in an amendment. We'll just get that wording up on the screen. Do we have a seconder for that item? Mayor, oh, Councillor Greco, thank can you. Can I ask a question, Mayor Williams? Sure, Councillor Newton, no problem. Thank you. Uh, in the agenda of the last meeting, it says 23... 24, NARC, name associated with cold migrant communities in explore intersectionality. So I'm unclear on why a report would be needed to do that. So if we've already passed an item that says that NARC will be named in 23, 24, uh, I'm unclear what need there would be for a report about it. To our officers, can you kindly please clarify? Councillor, uh, Councillor, <coughs> Carly Bennett's. Yes, oh, sorry, Mayor, um, for the June report, so June, so to come to the June meeting should also be included in that line. Sorry. Through you, Mayor Williams, if it assists, my recollection is that the only previous council decision re referencing um, naming in association with NARC was in November 2022, when the draft naming policy was endorsed by council to proceed to community consultation and the naming priorities identified in that report were referred to the 23-24 council plan, action plan process. That's my understanding of the only decision on the books. Thank you. May, could I ask a question, please? Certainly. Councillor Rennie? Um, thank you. Yeah, it's probably a question for Carly. For you, how long does a naming process typically take and what are the steps involved? Uh, through you, Mayor, the naming process can uh, take anywhere between six to 12 months. Um, obviously, we need to undertake engagement with our community uh, around uh, names that uh, would resonate uh, with with them. Uh, there are also a range of requirements um, that we're required to meet in terms of the uh, geographical naming conventions and we also need to seek approval uh, from that body uh, as to any uh, names that council may wish to consider uh, as part of that. They 
they ensure that it meets the geographical name guidelines um, and they provide feedback through that process. So some of the timing is driven by us and some of the timing is driven by a third party. Um, thank you for that. Based on that answer, would I be correct in um, my understanding that it may not be possible if NARC is to open in 2023 to have a name beforehand? And if that was the case, would this motion actually hold up the opening of NARC? Through, through you, Mayor, um, the, as far as I'm aware, and my colleague Sam might be able to talk further around the signage for um, the Northcote Aquatic Centre, but my understanding is that at the moment uh, that is proceeding to be constructed with the Northcote Aquatic Centre naming. Um, that, that certainly wouldn't halt the opening of the centre, centre itself um, and is something that council could consider after going through this process, but it does take a period of time. But my colleague Sam may wish to add. Councillors, because we're running out of time, I'm going to ask for a procedural motion to have this item to be carried over to the next council meeting, which will be a special meeting, then we can unpack it because I feel that we're just going to be asking a lot Thank more you, questions Mayor. until then. Um, I'm going to also ask for 9.4, 9.5 and 9.8 for an, an urgent business item to, special, to the special council meeting, which will be on Monday. Do I have a mover and a seconder for that? Councillor Messina and a seconder, Councillor Hannan. All those in favour? That's been carried unanimously. Thank you. So, councillors, I'm going to ask for us to go through the urgent items that we must complete this evening, which are the items in confidential. In camera, I believe, is that correct? I need a motion for to go into camera. Councillors, do I have a motion and can I have a mover and a seconder for that, please, to go into camera? Happy to move that, Mayor Williams. Councillor Rennie and then I've got Councillor McCarthy. All those in favour? That's been carried unanimously. Thank you. Councillors, I'm asking for... Um... Yep, you can...